Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Monstrosities, a vlog of Tokusatsu. I am your host, Matt Burkett, and tonight is a very special live stream. We are going back in time about 10 years to check out the Hideaki Anno Tokusatsu special effects. Hold on, I got the book right here. You guys gotta you gotta listen to the English title for this. You ready for this? I'm not even joking. It is the the Tokusatsu Special Effects Museum Craftsmanship of Showa and Heisei Eras seen through miniatures, right? But of course, uh, tonight wouldn't be so special unless we didn't have this guest. He is the author of Behind the Kaiju Curtain, which is available now on Amazon.com, amongst a whole other places. A uh, good friend of the channel and good friend of mine, the one, the only, Mr. Norman England. What is up, my man? Hello. How you doing? I was just, I was just playing with this. You know these guys? Oh, what is what is that? Uh, it's something I got, I got in the 80s. Um, I'm sure there are people out there, if anyone's out there, that know this better than me. I used to have like a dozen of these, and I'd clip them all around my Christmas tree, and now I only have two <laughs> left. You know, I've moved so many times in my life. You know, like I grew up in New York. Well, I was born in California in uh, uh, a town called Burlingame. It's mm -hmm. in the kind of San Francisco area. Yeah. And then... When I was three, moved to Flushing, New York, in, which is in Queens, and then to Rockland County, which is a suburb of New York City. And then I moved to Las Vegas on my own when I was 19, 79, back to New York, back to Rockland County, then into New York City, and then New York City to Osaka, and then Osaka to tokyo <laughs> and in in those places i moved like in new york i must have lived in like six places you know Good over Lord. 10 years <laughs> so now i'm like oh and then, and then when i moved i was in osaka and then i lived in a couple places and then when i came to tokyo you know so i could be on the godzilla sets yeah you know, and i have it like covered in my book too um you know, I, I was coming to Tokyo, you know, to visit sets. Like when I went to um, Gamma 3, mm -hmm. you know, I had to uh, travel over here. That's yeah. why I was at Kyoto Station because Kyoto is so close to Osaka. It's like 30 minutes by train. That's so that was very it. easy to be there for uh, three days on Gamma 3. And then when I was doing Ga a Godzilla 2000, um, I had to travel here to Tokyo, which is where I am now. And then when Kaneko got GMK, I was in Tokyo at that time, I think for the the film festival, Tokyo International Film Festival. And and then when I pulled it out of Kaneko that he was going to do GMK, I was like, let me move to Tokyo. Because <laughs> he had this apartment. Yeah, he had the apartment. Mikitozawa, and he was letting me use it. He was letting me stay at his place when I would come. Then he got sick of that. And then he's like, you know, I got this place over here. And I share it with a couple other directors, you know, that are out of town and no one's been using it. So why don't you use it when you come? And then I was like, look, no one's using this place. Let me just take it over. So he was like, yeah, OK, I guess it's OK. Just do it type of thing. And that's uh, awesome. And then that's so. I, and, you know, that, and I moved into this place. And this is the funny thing. Um, moved into the place. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be temporary. So I never organized my books. I just threw them on the shelf, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it wound up being the place, other than my childhood home, that I've lived the longest in. You know, I lived in the same <laughs> way. And I used to be this type of guy, like I'd move into an apartment. Okay, I'm only going to be for here for half a year, but I would have every book in alphabetical order, everything lined, you know what I mean, lined up. Yeah. And then this place was like, okay, whatever. And I'm even now I've been in this place for like eight years or so, and I'm still just, oh, geez. screw it. I throw everything on the shelf. There you go. What Life's too short to organize <laughs> books. But anyway, uh, no, thanks for having me here. And anyway, this is something that's been like, I've been carrying this and other things around with me for all these moves. So naturally things have um yeah, there yeah you that's go. what isabella says <laughs> those get those who i played with back then you know um yeah the uh i've lost stuff along the way you know i have friends that have never moved in their life and i'm always so jealous because they, they've got all their childhood toys you know they got all this stuff and i like look at this stuff on ebay you know half of me you know i can't afford any yeah. of it 
<laughs> but I'm always like, oh man, I did buy, I, oh, you can't really see it, but I'm going to angle this up. I did buy that, the strange change toy, which is like a Mattel toy. Oh yeah. 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 Sixties. I had that. I got that one Christmas. It was the, like the greatest thing ever. That's and, super cool. So, um, um yeah. Just real quick here for everybody in the chat. For some reason, uh, StreamYard is being weird, and I cannot see your new comments, which really sucks, because that kind of takes away the any possibility. Oh, of wait, I see all that. these like comments and stuff. That's good because like I can't. Um, we got Isabella in here. Yo, yo, yo. We got John. We got Davis Stud. Yes, we hello, John. Cassidy. Three pod reptiles. What is up, my friend? Good seeing you, Doomzilla, the immortal Red Fox. He says that is uh, his wife. His wife's family is from Rockland. Oh, really? Cool. That's pretty cool. And uh, he is uh, originally from a small town called uh, Mahupak. Mahupak. Okay. So it sounds Indian, so it must be East Coast. And uh, and Isabel says nice toys you have. Okay, I think now maybe I'm seeing. I don't know what is happening here. And then John says hi, Norman. Yeah, there's something. I don't know. Whatever. If it if it becomes a big problem, we'll. Well, okay. uh, well so. I kind of look at it, but I tend to like when I go into my chit chat zone, I'm not like, focusing on the. Oh, no. The I mean, that's my job. Side. It's just like, you know, we, we pay good money for this service, but, you know, it is what it is. People uh, go ahead and go. But Norman, why are you here? Why, like what? Why? Why do you? Why did you drop by today? Are we talking about the meaning of life here or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um. Well, yeah. Why are you? No, I. I just thought, like, you know, I haven't been on your channel in a, a little while, and you know, one of the good things about uh, the internet uh, is that you know we can share stuff now. You know, like we used to not be able to, and. Um, so I've actually got like a crap load of event photos, you know, that I've been taking in Japan, you know, Godzilla centric or, you know, Kaiju centric stuff since I moved here in 93. And even before, like I was just telling you, I've been scanning negatives, like yeah. I go into these scanning modes, you know, and I'm trying to get through these piles and folders full of 35 millimeter negatives, in which a lot have lost their color this crappy um developing company i used in osaka if they were still <laughs> still around i would go and like strangle that place you know because it lost <laughs> i guess the blue on the dye oh you know? God. And it's really annoying i I'm, i have i have stuff i took in the 70s 60s 70s and 80s you know like left over from you know the family and stuff and they they kept they retained their color but luckily um working with photoshop they have a new colorizing option on it nice. for like black and white and it looks like it still has some color so i can kind of blend them together and it's a pain in the butt but you know when i want to put up on twitter yeah, i like to do that on twitter too as i like to I, I i have like i'm involved with the uh george romero foundation in japan mm -hmm. so i've got people who follow me for that then i have people who follow me for my japanese photos and then i've got people follow me for the godzilla stuff so i'm constantly trying to like okay i i've neglected you know these people i gotta throw up some stuff so that's what i mean like i've been um, scanning these old photos you know and, and i put up some stuff you know uh and anyway I, why i'm mentioning this is i didn't even know i had these it's like oh i have some photos from when i went to see uh godzilla versus mecha godzilla Two? Is that what you call it in the U.S.? The, yeah, 93. And, and I had some photos from that on 92, which I took before I moved to Japan because I'd come and visited Japan um, that year. So I was like, oh, didn't even know I had these photos. You know, <laughs> outside the theater in Osaka, you know, and then some inside the theater. I mean, you know, the 35, and if anyone is old enough to remember... It, taking photos back then was a lot different than taking photos now T today it's so you know you, you 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 take photos of this and that and this and that and that and that, and that without even thinking but back then it was like okay i'm going to go to this special event and i'm going to come out of it with five photos and you thought that was like <laughs> a lot <you> know? <laughs> or my family like we would we would get um it would take us like a year to use a roll of film you know 
and that's why kind of photos from back then are a little more precious i think absolutely than, than today it was a different it was a different beast back then anyway um yeah so i've got all these photos and i thought yeah you know like you know i don't think we're gonna get like huge numbers audiences watching these things but i thought it might be fun to share some of these you know I, you know yeah. Friday nights are typically a little weird. Weekends are always a little weird, but I think that the people that are here, I, you know, including the immortal red box, you just said he's excited to hear about Anna's exhibit. Um, a lot of this stuff, because, you know, you've, you've shared with me a lot of these event photos. I think what's really cool is like most of these things I've never even knew existed. You know, these aren't things that we saw even in certain un, you know, certain fanzines that will not be named. Um, so it's uh, we get to kind of live through that, you know, through you, you know what I mean? Kind of go back in time and, and see these things. So it's yeah, definitely- I'll have, to, I'll have to get into some of my nineties ones. Like I think I've shown you photos. I put on Twitter, the Mothra events when the yeah. Mothra movies came out. Those were really weird. <laughs> I mean, they're all like totally kitty things, you know, there I am, right. with my shoulder length hair, my my leather jacket, you know, this and, and my, my sunglasses and stuff it was like what you know but i braved <laughs> those things the kitties to get to mothra you know but yeah that was kind of uh, a weird era you know when destroyer you know it's kind of ended yeah. godzilla they were claiming no one really knew if that was true or not and then they came out with these less than spectacular mothra movies you know and uh hello paul i see you over there Paul tag it in the chat. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then until the, and that's, that's, I'll tell you the reason why I picked this event, you know, cause the history of Godzilla in Japan has been a lot of ups and downs, yeah. you know? So yeah, around 95 when destroyer, you know, concluded the Heisei period, you know, I think Japanese are kind of burnt out on Godzilla. You know, then the Mothra films came out and they were very, you know, aimed for the, the kitty market. I don't think they did very well. And then, you know, and they were like giving room for the 98 Godzilla, the U.S. Godzilla. Yeah. That came out and, you know, it got, I, I cover that in my book also, you know, how it was um, received in Japan. Not so well. It basically it was just like oh of course you know them foreigners they don't get it <laughs> you know so and then you know they started the millennium series and that wasn't that big it was like kind of it just pulled in enough to keep it going so to speak you know and then you know when it ended on final wars i mean final wars was a big you know box office bomb here right you know? and even like when i was up at toho i'm like so what's next with Godzilla? And those guys are like, we're so sick of Godzilla. I can guarantee we won't do another Godzilla for at least 10 years, which is pretty much, you know, that was like yeah, 2006, day, you know, and then Shin Godzilla, you know, 2016. And then, so there was that like all, you know, I'm sure there are people who remember like in the, like 20 years back, I mean, toy sales had bombed out, you know, mm -hmm. there were dealers that were getting out of the market. You know, there wasn't, there was, it was like, we all, everyone who liked Godzilla knew each other. That's how small it was. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was like, even if someone new came in, like, who is this person? You know, you could now, I mean, today it's like, because of legendary, you know, there's all these people like, you know, or you look at like the Twitter things and it's like, you know, thousands of retweets from the official Godzilla thing. So it's really yeah. grown, you know, exponentially. But but then I guess, um, you know, of course, you know, the legendary films, you know, injected new life into Godzilla, mm -hmm. you know, and so there and, and i'm talking about i'm going to talk about like in japan you know like what, right. what happened in japan was there were two big events that happened that really changed the japanese point of view of godzilla you okay. know like and and one of them the first really major one is the show i'm going to show you photos from is this 2012 show so this came out two years before the 2014 film mm -hmm. you know and up until that time I mean, I've gone to department stores. I've seen, 
you know, the the Oxygen Destroyer 10 million times, you know, uh, Yuji Nishimura, you know, um, M, M1, you know, the toy maker, you know, he's got yeah. this huge collection. I've been up to his place. You, you know, you, you, you could spend weeks in, in it's incredible. new at his place, you know. And so he he lends them out and they're always like, you know, people come. Oh, yeah, check that out. So I go to they they do this event. You know, Ano, it's really Ano and Higuchi are the ones that put this this event together. But you know, Ano is like a superstar in Japan, yeah, because of Evangelion. Uh, because of Evangelion, and so it was kind of like not to belittle the Japanese people, but they're very easily influenced by, you know, I mean, you know, it's like I don't know if this is good or not. Oh, wait, this guy said this guy famous guy said it's good it must be good <laughs> Again, like uh sano uh, uh, sano shiro you know from godzilla 2000 during yes. the shooting of godzilla 2000 we're, we're hanging out in studio one when they're doing those rooftop scenes and he was telling me that he made this movie called um karaoke how do you say okay. that karaoke <laughs> and he said that he got no notice in japan but it wasn't until he got he won an award in europe that suddenly the japanese were like oh my god this is awesome you know and he's like why are we like this you know so <laughs> it was kind of like you know ano came out and ano was like this stuff is good and he put on this exhibition of props you know from showa and heisei and oh my god i've never seen crowds like this before yeah you know i went twice i went once with ed and they were you're not you weren't allowed to take photos but we got permission to take photos so i have those photos today i haven't shown them in 10 years I'm sure they're not gonna arrest me 10 years later <laughs> um but anyway i mean yeah no it was i i mean both of us were astonished at the reception now it was you know i had the stamp of approval from you know this guy so the people came by and that was the, a major event to reevaluate this stuff in Japan. You know, it's the same thing, you know, with Kurosawa films. You know, now yeah. Kurosawa was like the genius of our cinema and he couldn't make films. He had, you know, he had to get money from George Lucas and, you know, Coppola, yeah. and Coppola to, to, to finance his films. And now they're like, you know, you know, our our claim to fame here. So it's, you know, but it's it's like they're constantly... And this isn't anything like news breaking me saying this. I mean, a lot, you know, everyone knows this about Japanese people. I don't mean it in, in, a, in, a, in a bad way. I mean, everybody's like that. In, right. Just, you know, Americans are like that as well. Just I, I noticed like living in Japan, like you watch TV commercials so much, like they rely on um, celebrity endorsements more mm -hmm. than the US. You know, the US is a little better at like this here. Here's some glue. Awesome glue. Use the glue. You know, and then they'll have like, you know, a guy from some idol group like this, this, you know, all cool and shit. And people are like, I love that guy. I've got to buy the glue. And it gets, it would get weird once. Like if this horrible group I hated so much called Snap, they're gone now, finally, <laughs> after being around for like 25 years. But like my favorite was like one of the guys in Snap was um endorsing tampons who what woman would would like look to a guy like oh yeah this guy is recommending tampons i must buy those tampons i mean what in god's name or you get celebrities endorsing tires you know they're a singer and they're endorsing car tires i mean it was just like how do <laughs> things connect you know it's at least a little better in the u.s you'll get like maybe someone who's a specialist in something indoors right something. here it's right. just like haphazard you know they they contact the uh the jimu show the talent agency we want to get this guy on this thing yeah sure whatever just pay us the money you know they're then they hawk the product and stuff right. so japan's ha has a long history of that kind of thing and you know it is what it is um so anyway, I mean, but of course, you know, Ano is involved in in this kind of stuff. And Ano came out like this stuff is awesome. You should think it's awesome too. And man, people came out, and from that this event, 
the attitude in Japan towards this stuff, you know, changed a lot. Then the 2014 film came out, you know, the 2014 film did very well in Japan. Um, all the best of the three, because, you know, of course they were curious to see, you know, that like their interest had been picked by, you know, Anos endorsed mm -hmm. things and regular people were like seeing it as uh, uh, like, uh, you know, something to be culturally proud about. And then, that's why the 2014 did, um, I don't know the numbers offhand, but it did better than King of the Monsters. And of course, you know, we had the pandemic to deal with, with the Kong yeah. film. So that's a little unfair to compare them. But yeah, after that, people were like, okay, got it. This is what Hollywood's all about, you know. But <clears throat> even so, I mean, it's now regarded as, you know, this stuff is regarded as art and is regarded yeah. that they're in there, accepted as, you know, one of the, things they can be proud about in japan so you know we went to this event and like i said i've seen um a, a lot of uh events you know in my day but this is, was one probably had like the most stuff all under one roof you know and it was done at this what is this place called the uh i have it museum of like contemporary art or something art like that tokyo yeah museum of contemporary art tokyo so you have the book. I don't even have the book, so I should have picked it up. Well, it's weird. Like when you're talking about it, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have that. But yeah, this yeah, um, a, yeah, 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 has all the all the stuff in there. So yeah, no, I should have gotten it. Damn it. Um, no, I went to the um, Odai show at uh, Ueno Park a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and that was incredible because I've never seen such a collection of Odai stuff before i've seen the godzilla paintings you know before it when 2014 came out they did they they had on display in shibuya and i might have mentioned this before i went and I, me and uh, uh my friend bruce were like we we're like oh my god and like the godzilla 84 poster like the 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 print poster is completely garbage compared to the real one the real thing is so much more clear and dynamic they really didn't do a good job reproducing it for the wow. actual poster and then like a couple of years later i teach subtitling and one of my students came up to me and she goes i think you're a fan of my father's and i'm like yeah who's your father and she's like odai and i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no you've never like, told me that story that's amazing huh? You've never told me that story. Oh, really? And she's like, oh, me and my family, we I saw you when you were looking at my dad's paintings, and we were just like so happy, how enthusiastic and how you know much you were loving the painting. I'm like, why did you talk to me? You know, <laughs> because her English is fantastic. You know, I did like two subtitle lectures and she was there for both of them, but like, oh, but it was really funny. Oh, like, yeah, who's your so dad? Cool. Oh. Like I, I can only think of like maybe five people I'd be really like nervous to meet their kids, right. you know, and that's like one of them. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, but that was like the 2014. That whole year was like a big red letter year for you know Godzilla um, appreciation in Japan. So um, so anyway, uh, I was today. I thought you know I haven't been on that show in a while, and all I do is talk about my book. I don't even have a copy of my book around. I want to hold it You don't it even up. have a copy. Wait, I do. I do. Oh, do you? I have a, I have to say, buy my freaking book. <laughs> <laughs> um, Link is down below, people, <laughs> for those who haven't No, I actually, I, I gave at the show yesterday, art director Mike, uh, Toshio Mike was there because he's very much involved with the Ino Ue um, stuff. I gave him a copy of my book and, and Mike's in my book a lot. You know, I mean, he really, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have had, you know, of course, Kaneko gave me the keys to right. Toho. You know, he, he, he worked it out with the office, you know, but it was really after I got on this set, it was especially with the special effects set. It was really up to me to be able to get along with, with the people there, you know, and Mike was the one that I, um, you know, worked on having a good relationship with him, with the art department. And then after GMK, my book doesn't go beyond um, GMK, but, um, and Kaneko was gone, you know, right. so it was really like, after I still want to go to the sets, I can't, I can't not go to the Godzilla sets anymore, you know, and Mike was the one who really um, 
yeah, it was really nice when I went to uh, Mecha Godzilla GXMG. <laughs> I went to that set. Mike had a desk set up, and it said reserved for Norman England. So he That's kept awesome. me, he kept the office away from me, so they couldn't touch me. You know, and then I then I had you know free access. So I really owe Mike a lot and stuff, and um, and it was good. So I gave him a copy of the book yesterday. Not nice. like you can really read English or anything like that, but you know we're working on the Japanese version. Hopefully that'll come out. It'll, but it'd still take at least a year you know, to translate and stuff. Well, anyway, you know, so the, yeah, the event I went to yesterday was at the same uh, contemporary Museum of Contemporary Art, Tokyo. So I thought, why don't we just go through these photos and I'll just say stuff. Yeah. If anybody um, wants to say anything, say stuff or, and I won't be able to see it because I'm going to be sharing my screen. You'll just yeah, hear I'm, I'm me keeping, the, I'm keeping an eye out. Bodied voice, so. <laughs> let me let me get my end set up here. So hold on. Doomzilla says buy his book. It's a great read. Thank and you, Doomzilla. I'll tack it's wondering if you were a part of an AOL new group on in the 90s. I guess you mean news group, but um news yeah, group. it wasn't everybody back then. That was all you had back then were those, yeah. you true. Know, those crappy groups, you know, and you know the threads the endless threads of things very <laughs> barbaric but anyway um and if i was part of the group i always go under my real name you know I, i'm not a uh i don't pick names and go anon anonymously or anything right. like that. so anyway this is like um uh, yeah, cool. this place is like on the other side of Tokyo from me. So you, you have to walk from the station. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes or whatever. So me and Ed Gajicheski, we went um, together. So this is actually my photos here are a mix of both of our photos. So this is and, just like on the and, way. And I just publicly thank Ed for, for because I know that you asked him about the photos and notes and stuff. So thank you, Ed, for helping out with tonight's stream too. Okay. Well, anyway. I don't know what this is, but it was like pointing the way to the museum. Very nice day. I mean, who knows? They couldn't afford actual signs. Well, they do have them. I mean, I was there yesterday. But I haven't been there since the show, and there I. Did they have the scarecrows yesterday. yesterday, though? No, it was. It, it hasn't rained in like a month in Tokyo, and of course, the day I go out, it's like pouring rain. Naturally. <laughs> anyway, this is like getting up to the museum. So that's the, yeah, it, um, I guess it went on for three months, you know, so I, I went twice. There's on the outside. Yeah. Love that. The title, but yeah, I, the title is... I guess they mean to say as seen through miniatures, you know? So anyway, I like this photo because you got these women here with the old cell phones from 10 years ago. I think this yeah. was before the iPhone was introduced. And it was very funny. The iPhone, um, all the Japanese cell phone carriers were very afraid of the iPhone. So they were doing a lot of anti-iPhone promotion back then. And you'd read these articles how the iPhone it would be incompatible with the Japanese personality and even like foreigners who are overly infatuated with Japan would be like, it'll never fly in Japan. Man, the iPhone, the day it went on sale through one of the minor car carriers here was like yeah. sold out. <laughs> Naturally. You know, and then the iPhone just took over and then everybody eventually had no choice but to, to carry it, you know. Yeah, and Apple and it. Google rule the world now. Yeah, well, you know. But anyway, I like these old... These old, she has some kind of a smartphone, but that's got to be, uh, it's probably a Sony thing. Anyway, this is, wow, this is what is crowd were like, you know, this might've been from the second time I went on the last day. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really, my memory is a little hazy. This, this might be a, out of order. This might be from that last day, but I went like, what for a bunch of Godzilla props? I've never yeah. seen anything like this in my life in That's Japan, crazy. you know? So anyway, this is, here's Ed. Yep. So see, he's got the band on his arm. We had to have those so people wouldn't 
So you, when you get harassed, think, yeah, sometimes um, Japanese will come up to the foreigner to tell them that they're doing something wrong. Um, one of my favorites is like I have, you know, my my visa for Japan. And when I come into the airport, I would be allowed to get on the line with the Japanese people. And yeah. I would always get Japanese. You know, they're like, excuse me, uh, you must be over there. And I just go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then they'd be like, what is this guy? He's like, so and then I just walk through, you know, <laughs> so. So, I, you know, but we had these bands, so no one bothered us. But anyway, this is like walking into the thing. Man, oh, look wow. at these guys. I couldn't believe this, you know. So they had like the, the mark of light there. That's like a, a photo, you know, a flat photo. Yeah. Kind of looks 3D-ish here, but, you know, hanging from the ceiling. Then, you know, going in oh, like this. Cool. So... um Anyway, I'll show you this. Anyway, this is sort of the ambience of the place. And and some people have like headphones because they had like those, uh, you know, guided tours. Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, oh, Mothra. You ever see this film? Matt, you ever never, this film? never heard of it. What, yeah. what? What is this? What is it about? Well, it's this giant bug. No. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I watched it recently. I hadn't seen it. You know, it came out on Blu-ray. I watched it and it's like, oh man, the whole ending battle stuff all takes place on the street around the corner from me. Does it really? Yeah. I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. And, and um, my partner, Miyako, she's like, yeah, that's just right over there. I mean, but it's, you know, back in the sixties. So everything's completely different. Right. Right. You know? But anyway, this is a repro of Tokyo tower. I love Tokyo was, tower. Um, in the film. Yeah. And this is the original schematic for building Tokyo tower. Or, or or a copy of it but this is what the schematic was do you happen to know if this if these came from like um i know you you were talking about mike um and there was another person you were mentioning before was this a combination of different people's collections did this come from toho directly oh i don't really know but i think these come from toho and um nishimura okay. Yuji. yeah you know i think um, cause with Yuji, a lot of people give him stuff cause Yuji's like up, um, near, uh, in the Fukushima area, mm -hmm. he's got like warehouses. Yeah. You know? I mean, he, the guy's got the space to keep this stuff, you know, like when me and Ed went to his place several years back, um, he had like his home, which was several floors. And then he had his factory, you know, for his, his toys and stuff. And that was like. Yeah floors he had like a big huge gamma room wow with gamma suits you know he had another he's a guitar collector he's got a room yeah. that's just filled with guitars i'm like what the hell i got like <laughs> one guitar here i'm dying over here you know <laughs> Can you even play <laughs> but anyway so you know then they had like tables like this stuff Jeez. so i got thing yeah i'm just showing like you see those white phones like this these guys have those are those yeah can you see my cursor here yes i do mm -hmm. okay yeah those, so those are like the guided tour things and so we have this guy this is from battle in outer space this uh the this the ship you know yeah. battle in outer space so yes. this is yeah, yeah i guess yeah. Um, i think this is an original one and this is you know the p1 from monster zero I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to point out everyone who thinks that we we don't like Mothra. Isabella says that's the first appearance of Mothra, Matt. Yes, Isabella, I know. I, I was I was being sarcastic. We love Mothra. Mo I'm 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 giving Mothra love right now. I yes, love, we love, we love Mothra. Mothra. Mothra is we great. Mothra. Go buy the Blu-ray, which I think Ed and Steve do a commentary on, if I'm not mistaken. Probably right. So there's another angle of the P1. You know, I, I see P1 and I'm always thinking of, um, isn't that uh, Pee Wee Herman's bike name? Oh, <laughs> shoot. Is it? You know, um, he's, you know, his, his, his yeah, bike. yeah, no, it, that sounds very familiar. You know, he's um, got his, his bike and maybe they took it from this. <laughs> let me, let me see. Hold on. We got it. We got to know this. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, 
apparent well i can't find it just with a small okay, whatever they're probably but... wrong anyway but i'm just being stu silly I'm, I'm just being silly so ignore me it's it's saturday morning here in tokyo i have license <laughs> to be silly no we, we're, we're all deadly serious here on this uh, okay channel. and this is the jx1 which is from gorath do you like gorath the film i haven't seen gorath in like 30 years and i i really want to see it again so I need uh, I need to revisit that film. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Why? Well, I was just curious. It's a movie that has never come up, you know, in conversation between you and I. Oh, okay. um, I saw it a couple of years ago for the first time. Um, How was it? Uh, there are aspects about it that are fun, like the special effects, but I, I think it's kind of absurd. You know, the injection of a giant monster is kind of ridiculous. Um, right, 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 right. But it's yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's a minor, you know, it's a minor Toho film, but it's yeah. got, um, it's got those scenes up in uh, up in the snow, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, to okay. be perfectly honest, I, mean, I just remember yeah. they move the Earth by putting rockets on it, so they move the Earth out of the way, out of its orbit, to to miss the the meteor, and then yeah, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh these are more uh what was i saying uh i think battle in outer space the the 106 over there Dude, some beautiful models man yeah and the and the 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 ball like thing that's also battle in uh, that's it. Oh, i'm sorry war in space war in space for you because i know that you're very much a miniature guy like when you see these things are you just like oh my god like i mean is it like what is it about these for you that really just work like make it art if that sounds like a weird question well, I'm trying to yeah i mean you know like yeah these i don't know it's just a feeling i mean i like the the um i can't think of the word right now i just like the aesthetic yeah thing you know um i mean honestly i'm not a big fan of japanese spaceship designs mm -hmm. i don't know you know i'm more like 1950s u.s spaceship designs Gotcha. However, for the Japanese stuff, when it comes to like the the Mazer tank, the Mazer Shah, you know those things, I like the Mecha stuff more than I like their more traditional rocket things. So maybe that's like a U.S. thing, you know. Maybe I don't know what that is. So there's certain things that that I like, um, but it, just in general, you know. I right. mean, I love, you know, I'll, I I would all I'll, I will always love a well-made model and a well photographed model. Absolutely, you know, I, I just like the the look and the feel of it. You yeah, know? no, these are these are just beautiful to look at. I mean, I know these are just a couple of spaceships, but it's um, it really is just so freaking slick. Yeah, these are these are nice. So yeah, and these are original ones, you know, on display like that. So mm -hmm. they had yeah, this is these and uh, uh, this guy. This is also battle in outer space ships. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the Japanese are really into the silver and red scheme, you know, the Ultraman. Oh, yeah. Stuff. And I'm not like a big fan of silver and red like that, but and um, I, I don't and mean to uh, I, I don't mean to disrespect it. I'm just talking about my personal. Oh, no, no, no. I was I was actually going to say the same thing. It's kind of hard for me to discern sometimes the Ultraman ships and these ships and stuff because the aesthetic is so similar. But that's right. also I'm going with what you said. It's not a knock. Um I still think that the the work on them is impeccable. Yeah, no, it's, it's they're awesome. always still I mean, fun to it, see in, in motion. Yeah. yeah, this guy I like. I like that checkerboard thing they used to do on ships. You know, it's very kind of space amoeba ish. That that module on the front there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, this guy's cool too. I don't know why I look at this thing. It's got this thing on it, but I keep on thinking of uh, Luke Skywalker's. You know lightsaber test thing that flies around oh the little yeah the little training yeah. droid thing in, in right, 77 right, 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 right. yeah well i'm probably saying like sacrilegious stuff all all through <laughs> yeah, the, yeah we're gonna get canceled by uh by check it out though, though check out this how like when they put how they tied it down and they have like carefully with this oh, yeah. you know soft uh thing here so the 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 thin wires don't scrape into it you know that's kind of cool anyway so there's there. those ships oh and i wanted to get into this you know what this is right is uh oh god that's a some no maybe not i thought it was a submersible you but i'm wrong for that you fail no <laughs> um this is the diving bell from latitude zero 
Okay, and, I've only seen Latitude know. Zero once, to be fair. Oh, really? Okay, and yeah. and um, Mr. Takarada was inside that thing. He passed away the other day, sadly. Yeah. So, yeah. I really liked your um, your Facebook story about him. That was a, a very touching story, and it just seemed so characteristic of him. You know, no matter where he was. Yeah. No, I mean he. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, what's really weird, too, he was not really involved in this Godzilla stuff until we brought him into um, bringing Godzilla down to size. And after that, maybe that was like a wake up call for him. Really? You know, like, oh, there's there's these this thing. And I, you know, I haven't really I don't want to say tapped in on it, you know, because he's a very, you know, genuine person. Yeah. But I don't think he was really aware. And it was about that was like 2007. We shot that. Yeah. You know, and then that was, um, as I said, like the kind of awareness, you know, the realization of Japanese that this stuff was not the trash, you know, that the West always made it out to be. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, I mean, it was like no one liked Godzilla. That was, you know, over 10, you know. So right. um, and then after that, Takarada started to get more involved on in japan and you know with the uh, the g fest things and shows in the west and stuff and i worked on um american horror film in 2015 and was it the director he was at some event and he was saying like he never saw lines for takarada the japanese guests when he he had been to some event i think chiller and he was like you look at the other the u.s guests but it was the japanese people had like lines down you know out the door and stuff for them so you know really like no it's really amazing you know that the change you know in how you know the i guess i don't say society you know but yeah how you know what i mean like how society is like reevaluated these things and now yeah. discovered the value in them you know it's a little bit annoying on one hand because of all the crap, you know, had to deal with as, you know, fans back in the so-called day. But I mean, it's better than this stuff all being like still trashed, you know? So Yeah, exactly. So, and, it, and it's good for the people that, you know, worked on it now in their kind of, I hate to say it in their twilight years, they're getting the respect that they, you know, deserve. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, so, yeah, Takarada, um, I guess, you know, he realized that, you know, people did like these things and people did respect these things. And these were things he was involved in and they wanted to, you know, people wanted to meet him. They wanted to hear his stories, you know, and, and he embraced that and he was grateful for that, you know, and, and he always, you know, I've met him several times here and there, like me, Ed and Steve, we were at a super fest and he was there doing like signing. He saw the three of us. He had this like huge line. It was almost embarrassing. There was this huge line of Japanese, you know, fans wanting his autograph. He just stopped everything, called me, Ed and Steve over. And he's like, let me give you my autograph. Let's take photos together. We're getting these like nasty, evil eyes from every like, <laughs> you know, what's going on? And I'm kind of like, is this okay? So he's like, oh, it's fine, you know. So, but yeah, he was really like, but he, you know, he was nice to everyone, sort of, you know. Like, I was thinking of like George Romero. I understand was the same way at events that he, even though he had a long line, he would take the time with each person. Yeah, you know, and wouldn't uh, dismiss a fan. You know, and that that was what was so always so nice about um, Takarada. Yeah. So, anyway, this was his diving bell. There's another angle of it. It's really cool. I we wonder, had a. Uh... I wonder where number one, two, and three are. <laughs> In somebody's collection, Ed probably owns one of them. Yeah. I um, RJ had this to say. This this okay. might. Seem... I can't see those comments. Oh. Here. Sorry, uh, he says um, the color uh, scheme of the ships, the red and silvers, might have something to do with the flag of Japan. It's kind of like the silver is a futuristic white, and of course the red is is the red dot. So yeah, I, 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 makes I, 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 that ma that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like you know, in America, man, you know, red, white, and blue all over the place. You know, yeah. So, and then when yeah. you grow up in that environment, it feels natural to you. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 tap into that aesthetic. So. Yeah, that sounds sounds good. I need Ed here to he might be able to say something. Where but. the hell is Ed? 
He's probably living it up with his, <laughs> God, his incredible Godzilla collection. Yeah. Anyway, this is all that remains of Atragon. Really? Yeah, just the front drill. Holy shoot. Yeah. So there's the the back of it. That's from the original film. From the original, yes. Wow. Now, were th these things were like out in the open, right? They weren't behind glass. No, no, out in the open like this. Yeah. You can never do that here in the States. That's really incredible, though. And then, well, this is this table. And uh, what are these other? The, uh, the other ones are, um, this is war in space, war in space stuff in the front. I've and seen that. There's another artistic angle of these things. So nice. here, okay, let's get through these. Okay, here you have Ooh, a Mather yeah. Shah. But this is not from like War of the Gargantuas or anything like that. This is from the, uh, the Tokyo SOS. Okay. Is it Tokyo SOS? I was yeah, there. Tokyo SOS. <laughs> um, yeah, Tokyo SOS. They, they built a new one. I got like set photos of this thing up the, up the yin yang so so it was like when i go to these things and i see things that i worked with at, over at toho i'm like you should allow me to touch these because i was like touching this crap all the time with the <laughs> but i would never be that stupid only in my <laughs> mind stupidity exists exclusively in my mind well i sometimes my stupidity will release itself into the ether so Forgive me for that. But anyway, this is the Mazer Shah from um, the uh, to Tokyo S, uh, right? I am right on that, right? Tokyo S. Yeah, Tokyo S. I get confused sometimes. So, I mean, I'm not like. No, I no, I mean, it. it's um, I'm 90% sure it was Tokyo S. Okay. I don't think it was GXMG, okay. but I could be wrong about that. Um, people in the chat can, can tell us if. Yes. Uh, if, if what it was okay. okay this okay you see this globe over here and yeah even ed we're we were we're not really sure what this is from it, this um might be from the the dinosaur movie the 70s one what um the title of that I there was a super eye dinosaur movie are you talking was there a the total? last dinosaur the last dinosaur, last dinosaur. This dinosaur. might be from last dinosaur that's awesome yeah, it's like the earth God, on a stick. Looks like a big lollipop. Just the the detail of the clouds on that thing is insane. So this is uh what is this war in space? But he just kind of my friend Anzai, uh Leo Anzai, this is his aunt. She was in this film, and she's also named right here Anzai Ryoko, I think is her 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 given name. So that was like one of his claims to fame. He's in my book too. Nice. And um, yeah, so they had lots of design, you know, original design stuff yeah. on the walls and, and, and stuff. And uh, there's your, your Atragon painting. And they had these little things on the side. See, here's like, this is supposed to be Ano telling his little <laughs> otaku point as the guide. Yeah, see, and here, like, down here, like here, oh, see, here's Ano down here. Yeah. And over here, here's Anno over here. So, <laughs> Jeez, so this dude. is all, you know, design stuff like this. It's nice to see originals, you know, the original. Yeah, no, those are some beautiful pieces. Yeah, they're great. You know, and then. That's from Latitude Zero, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is actually Ino Ue. This is his design. Of, yeah. Of that. So. This is at the exhibit right now. This I've held that in my hands. Have you really? You know, I've been to Ino Uwe's place dozen dozen times. You know, what before shooting, uh, bringing Godzilla down to size, but even before we even thought about shooting. You know, I've gone over with Ed, uh, visiting his place, and then after shooting, you know, up until he died, you know, we would go every, every time Ed would come in, we'd always go um, to their their place and all the art wow. guys from toho we all get together and have wonderful meals mike would come you know and we could just go through all his stuff and his you know like just That's there terrific. yeah but now it's all in museums <laughs> you know so then swinging around the place there's a little more of the ambience of the room and we got oh what what is that <laughs> 
What is that? It's Mechagodzilla 2. This is actually in Yuji's collection. And Seriously? Uh, yeah. Can you believe it? You know, yeah. <laughs> well, thank God for him because you know this stuff wouldn't exist. Some of this stuff wouldn't it's exist true. anymore if Yuji didn't take, you know, take control of it. Did um, yeah. and, and this is going to sound like a very nerdy question and probably has never come up. Was there ever any point in conversation with him that you've had or heard about just the maintenance of of keeping these things, you know, existing in, uh, instead well, of deteriorating? I'll, I'll, I'll I'll show you something on that shortly. So okay. But I, I mean, you got to do something because these things will melt. Yeah, you know. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know what UG does or anything. I don't know. But but I'll I'll just show you one example. Oh yeah, shortly. for sure. But uh, yeah, so I think there's one of the only Showa suits left in existence. That's crazy. You know, and this was at, at that. I went with Andres. We went to the Ano, ex yeah, the Ano exhibition. And they had yeah. and this was there. And Andres is like, I never thought I would live to see the the Mechagodzilla suit. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, I understand. Got, you, you got, I would have been the same way. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. know, it, it would have. I'm Mr. Jaded, you know. So <laughs> yeah, I've worked on what five Godzilla movies or whatever the hell, you know. Well, and then here, I like this one. Oh, that's a sweet photo. Look at the kid. Okay. Yeah. I mean, check out his face here. You know, like, I know. Whoa, yeah. whoa. And then check out this one. Oh, he's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Damn, that suit is incredible. And I've got, yeah, then even uh, this woman's like, she's like, why are you, Mr. Foreigner? Why are you taking? Yeah. Photos? She, she's not happy at you. Yeah, she's not. Why do you get to take photos? Is this foreigner privilege? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but like the look on this guy's face, you never see that, you know, even five years earlier, you know, that look of like, okay, this is in a museum, you know, re, right. Not looking at his like cheap stuff, you know? So, and this is a ex gun. Yeah. From yeah. 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 And this might be in Yuji's collection too. Uh, I I can't remember. Damn, that is cool. And there oh you go. God. That <laughs> this thing I've I've seen this thing dozens of times. I mean, this is I think also part of Yuji's collection. But isn't that this thing is like weird? You know, it is. It's so. It really is. That is so cool. Wait, and wait, let me just see. You know, look at this stuff. Yeah. This, look, this looks like a, a you know plastic model, you know when you break You're the pieces right. off. Yeah, the, the glue that on there, you know. I mean, that's but, what that is. Yeah, but even even with that, the, it it really keeps a nice aesthetic going. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, it's, it's cool. You know, I mean, I'm not. I don't knock that stuff. I mean, oh no, I know, I know you're not. Yeah, because I'm just. I mean, I'm I'm kind of like I'm wowing over the fact of just like the little things that they do to to put this stuff together but then again like as a whole it just it works really well and it's so cool in the film when he gets his head knocked off and you see this and you're like what what yeah you know, really exactly. like, nice, like like i didn't expect that you know and that's what mo yeah. when movies rock you know is when they do something cool that you didn't expect and just adds to to it you know and they got um, films that's what's so great about them is they've got so many instances of that so true you know? They had that throwback in uh, one of the Singular Point episodes when Jet Jaguar got his head knocked off and it had that thing underneath oh, okay. it, which is kind of fun. So here you can really see into the suit here. You know, yeah. Man, like dude. Getting a little, you know, dried out there. There you go. And here you go. And wait, I've got some close-up shots here. There you go. Nice. Let's get in on that. There you go. How... um. Like approximately, how tall would you say that thing is? The size of a man, or woman. well, like the size of a person. Excuse me, six foot under six foot. Yeah, you know, I mean, it depends on the actor who it was designed for. So, right, right, right. I just I know that some suits are obviously smaller than others. I just didn't know, like, with this one, if it was made larger or. Oh, I mean, just it, to me, it was like average size. Okay. You know, like going from my experience on Millennium series, like Kitagawa was shorter than me. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why um Yoshida, you know, who's the only other person to play Godzilla in the Millennium series, 
Yoshida is 171 centimeters tall, and I'm 170. Gotcha. And Itagawa is shorter. So I never even considered, like, can I wear your Godzilla suit, Mr. Kitagawa? That never happened. You know, but then when I was on uh, GMK, it was like, oh, this guy's like my height, just off by a centimeter. That's where I, when I got the first inkling, like, yeah, I should ask if I can wear the Godzilla <laughs> yeah. suit, you know, because I was the same height as this guy, you know, otherwise, yeah. even well, if I had asked on the previous ones, I'd never fit into the suit. They would say, right. no. You, you won't fit into this thing. So it just worked out for me that I was, you know, the same height. So really, but this wasn't anything, you know, uh, didn't feel big or smaller than any other suit. So gotcha. You know, that's a nice shot. We've got a little bit in the back there. What is that stuff? That's really neat. Now here we can see it a little better here too. This is under glass too. Yeah. Look at that. I know. Look at these things, you know, this, it's just wild. Like a little it, fan that's there. That they got yeah, there. no, I mean, they just had, also they had like the balls to do this, you know. You know, just, yeah, just slap it on there. There you go. And look at the, just, the, the, the head. I know, know? The, the little electronic brain thing. You know? Yeah, that's like a brain like thing. Yeah, I don't know what this shot is. But kind of thing, you know. know? <laughs> and then, okay, and this, there's that kid again. Maybe that's oh, yeah. his like family. I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe the woman was looking at you all weird because you were following her around. <laughs> yeah, you're taking photos of my son. <laughs> and this is also the um, um hold on a second. This is, this is the, on this, there. the oh no, huh? Wait, this is the the black hole aliens gun. Yeah, from uh from the, 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 first the, one. the apes that's are so carrying cool. around. And it was actually originally a Kelak gun that they like repurposed. Really? Yeah. So that's what. Huh. Yeah, that's what that is. There you go. Yeah, I'd like that in that's my collection. Cool. And the SY three. No. SY three. But this is a reproduction, because okay. the original is gone. And I have a story to tell about that. Is like my friend uh, Isao, who's one of the art directors. Yeah. Um, one of the art directors. He um, told me that he he actually has the SY three, or he had the SY three. But he said, yeah, they, they it was in the garbage at Toho. He Are says, you... I took it home. <laughs> you know, like, thank God, you know. But but anyway, this is. Uh, a repro and this is actually also on display at you know always place because he designed this at I the, love the show three starts today yeah and it'll last for three months so and there's the top part of the s white street really cool and as you know i am uh my favorite godzilla film outside of the 54 because you you know what i mean that's its own thing own little thing yeah but, you know, just is destroy all monsters. Yep. And I know a lot of younger fans don't get destroy all monsters. And to them, I say, whatever. Hey, destroy I all get monsters it. Is all awesome. You know, I mean, it was my it dad's was, favorite. And it, it's there you go. Your dad was a man of, of high standards. <laughs> he saw that. Uh, I forget. There was a theater in Santa Cruz that he saw that at. And he was just there. He had a, a really good memory of, of watching that. And um, what was really nice as as a kid, it locally it did get broadcast where I grew up. And what I didn't realize because we taped it off TV, but what I didn't realize was like for a long time that movie didn't have a VHS release or a DVD release here in the states. So I didn't realize that I was actually getting something that most people hadn't seen. You know what I mean? In that yeah. at least of my generation. Um, well, I have a funny I story about that, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, no, by all means, um, please. No, I, I mean I never saw it in the theater but mm -hmm. i i saw it on tv in the 70s and man that was like you know my my pals you know in in uh in school we were all like you know this freaked us out me and my brother would run around in in our yard going dun 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 you know doing that and yeah and so in the 80s it was broadcast on tv in in new york and i'm like i'm taping this you know, yeah. I got to get this on tape. So I tape it. The idiots at the TV station, they showed two reels out of order. 
oh my god so i'm like watching this thing it like jumps into it's like real let's say there are five reels it was like real three and four were reversed <laughs> So what I had to do was I had to dub the VHS, put it in the proper order. So I had a, a you know, and it was now like, you know, oh God, second generation. Tape, right. you know, <laughs> Bozo. It's you know, that's when they would like actually broadcast film, you know, they would project yeah. film in the studio, aim a camera at it and then, and then uh, uh, show it that way. That's awesome. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I just wanted to point this out. Uh, Paul said he has to go because he has a tornado warning in his area. Oh, Paul, oh, be man. safe. Okay. Yeah, go go. be safe. Yeah, be safe uh, thank you for Paul. dropping thank in tonight. Coming in. Okay. Anyway, these are... No way. Papers. Are those... These aren't originals. I mean, they're like okay. on whiteboard, whatever. Okay. That's still really neat, though. Isn't that cool? How yeah, this, again? Yeah, look at that! I love that. Very possibly stupid freaking question. I mean, how are the articles that are in there? Are is it one of those things where it's like, are they legitimate or is it just babble? You know, I mean, these are legitimate. It doesn't make sense I because, like, I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't really, but I mean, like here, if if you look at this, is the Frank? Is it Frankenstein? Yeah, you know, and then this says about the Stuart. You know, Dr. Stewart, this is referring mm -hmm. to Dr. Stewart here, you know, and yeah, this stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I can't read all the kanji on these. Well, things, right, they right. Look, you know, I never really bothered with these things, but yeah, the headlines are all fine. Uh, I'd have to really look up close to the. I was just always things. curious, like how, like in depth they got with that stuff because i, I always thought that those were really it, it depends i mean you know a lot of the b movies in in that were shot in the new york area they there was a place on times square that would print headlines for you oh. and they all had the same you know that's a famous thing panic in new york yeah uh, they all had the same stories underneath them so even if you watch like the joe spinell movie maniac they have it you go back to the same headlines are on um, uh, Horror of Party Beach and, you know, other films. I'm a big fan of the Panic in New York headlines. Um, awesome. But I think on the more legitimate ones, I mean, the art department would would be involved in this. And when I worked on uh, Kaneko's Danger Dolls film, I was the still cameraman and trans I, I had to translate the script because it was like U.S. money was involved. And there yeah. were American newspapers on that, and they had me check, you know, the English on them. And yeah. I was writing things. I put on like all the actors. The, all the articles are written by somebody from that worked on Night of the Living Dead. So <laughs> you know, it's like all those names, you can't really see it in the film, but that was what like I had to do that during shooting, which was really a pain in the butt because I, I was bet. exhausted. Get to my room, you know, in the hotel, and it's like, can you check the newspapers? Oh crap. You know, sure. Anyway, that's so really cool. That's those things and is um, okay. I reckon is that submersion of Japan, or my full oh, crap? I'm drawing a blank right now because that's what I thought the other one was when you were showing the Takarada right. um, thing. I thought it was. Um, I think uh, if John Cassidy's there, he would know. He would rescue us. Oh, actually, maybe I can look right down here. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank on this. Sorry. What's the year on that? Do you see that? 73. Yeah, I guess it, so. It's the probably. Yeah, I guess it probably would be. Yeah, that I think it's submergence of submergence of Japan. The special effects in that movie is blows my mind. Yeah, that's really yeah, cool. This one's behind glass. <laughs> you're they you're following Ripley. that woman again. Did they may name Ripley an alien after this. I wonder. That's interesting. I don't know. Anyway, and oh, here's more art and stuff. Yeah, let's get through this. Oh, oh, we're back over here. The destroy all monsters display. Okay, these are a little out of order. Oh, here, I've nice. seen this before. You, this is you, your favorite character, right? Well, it's one of my favorites. I love Jet Jaguar. You've held the flying prop, and I hate you to yeah, so I have much. It. Actually, I'm gonna show that because there, there is the prop up there. Yeah. It looks all nice. These little art, arty things. There you go. Love it. And that's me with it. 
this is a this is a crappy cell phone shop, but this is it like restored. So there had so sometimes cool. Hataguchi restored this. So I was over at Hataguchi's place and he was restoring it. But this is what it was like. It had no arms and no feet. So that's all been added on the top up there. That's great. Look at that thing. Are you I don't know if I ever asked you, are you a Megalon fan at all on any level? Well, I'm a Megalon fan because it's a Godzilla film. Okay. Well, and I'm, a, I'm a fan of the dam scene. Yeah. And I'm a fan of when they get like catapulted in that back of the truck thing and manage to just like walk out of that. Oh, thing. yeah. Just roll. <laughs> <laughs> and it pops up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, it's like a Bugs Bunny cartoon where it falls down and just before you hit the ground, you step off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but. Um, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I, I understand that there are fans that are like, you, you bash that movie and they, you know, they, they, they gather in front of your houses with, you know, you know, with pitchforks yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. But yeah, we got, I mean, we got, I got one fan on, in the house. Yeah. Cold. I don't put on any of my top 10 lists or anything. My, you know, I mean, it's one of my least favorite Godzilla films, but I watch it. I mean, I used to like the MS um mst3k version of it but i don't i'm not really into mst3k like i used to be so um i don't watch that version anymore because i find it kind of disrespectful yeah though i do like the the um what do they say when they shoot that line out to the kid you know he's on that thing in the water and it's like oh, oh I, I have a yeah, joke yeah, about like you know whatever he um Japanese brings on a picnic, you know, it's like <laughs> the rocket launcher with the the rope, you know. So, um, I mean, it's a, it's a wild film, and I also, you know, I have to say, I don't appreciate the Eskimo spy thing. I find that very racist, you know. When they they do that on MST3K on that, oh, that film, you gotcha. know, when they're, they're, I've actually never seen. I don't think I've seen. Okay, no, I, they movie. they do this thing about so-and-so whatever they they give him some kind of uh, you know spiffy name and then they're calling him eskimo spy like maybe that comes from eskimo pie i don't know i, I and i i guess back in the early 90s it was kind of funny you know yeah. and now you watch it today and you're like oh that was really like not the brightest you know you're calling japanese people eskimos and even the term eskimo is considered you know that right. and that's been considered um you know, kind of a, a racist name for a long time, you know, even when I was like a, a kid, you know, trying to stop people from using that name, that word anyway. But anyway, so this is over at Hataguchi's place. I was there. I'm wearing my grudge to jacket. So this <laughs> uh, staff jacket. Grudge to. Um, awesome. So this was, yeah, whenever that was. So it was like boy 16 years ago something like that. something like that yeah and actually i got invited to meet hataguchi today but oh. i am passing on that um because i'm subtitling i'm in subtitle hell right now and this is me oh. playing hooky doing this today and then i'll get, <laughs> get into, well thanks for playing hooky yeah get into work mode when this when we're finished here and you know what this is? Yeah, that's the tram in Destroy All Monsters. Yeah, that scene is so great. And there, that Mothra larva thing, you know, when he sticks out of the tunnel, it's yep. the coolest thing ever. That, that whole sequence scene is really mind. wonderful. We manda wrapping himself around the tram. And then in the background, the explosion going off and Godzilla engulfed in flames. I mean, like, mm -hmm. come on. Mind blown, you know? It was great stuff. Yeah, I love the, the miniatures and destroy all monsters. I think are very impressive. That was, um, I think, kind of the peak of uh, Super Eye, in my opinion. Anyways, yeah, that that time right there it was all yeah. great stuff. And a lot of that was, you know, Ino Ue was really, you know, a stickler for quality. Yeah, you know, the Toho guys really had pride in their work. Like we are the the top of this, you know, and we're going to maintain our status. So they really busted butt to, 
I like that this little shot here, like <laughs> the way they latch together. Oh then, yeah, you, know, you got these things over here. You know, like they're really careful. Yeah, you it's know? nice to know that they're that careful, though. So, yeah, you know, and, and, you know, for me, it cracks me up because I'm gonna show some photos later. Like, you know, I've been at Toho. You know, you every day you walk by these sheds, you go in these sheds, and this stuff is just thrown in boxes haphazardly. You know. And now yeah. here it is at the museum, like carefully, guys with white gloves putting it out. It's like, oh man, you know, it was nothing like that at the studio with this stuff. You know, this stuff is just indiscriminately in boxes, you know, stacked on top of each other. So we have um, Mecha Gojira 69 saying, saw Godzilla versus Megalon and Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla 74 in the theater in 1977, which is really cool. Cool. And John Cassidy said, Destroyer Monsters showed such a cool looking future, which I agree with. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Nice. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Really? Well, it's yeah. like that's original design for the thing. Look at that. That's like, it looks like a samurai. samurai. Like it's I, was just, but I was just about to say, yeah. Very samurai esque. Yeah. We actually, uh, me and Miyako, we watched um, Hedra last night. We got back from the the show and i felt like watching hedra and that's really miyako's favorite godzilla film is it really um, it's just so you know wild you know yeah I mean, it's just like blown away by by the whole you know just the film is like what is going on in this movie but she was <laughs> saying that the way that hedra and godzilla are facing off in the way that like nakajima's shuffling his feet around that it's it's like a uh, a samurai film interesting you know the, the the way that they're stand they have that kind of standoff with the final yeah. film Hedra in him, and if you watch his feet shuffling. That it all comes from from that kind of stuff. So they were doing that purposely. Oh, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I hadn't really noticed that before. You know, so that's a movie that's definitely gotten a lot more love with its re reevaluation. I would say yeah. in the past five. I mean, I loved it as a kid. I mean, yeah. You know, that like when the, the pictures of that came out in Famous Monsters, me and my friends were like, we're like spending hours looking at, you know, that shot with, with you know, like when he's like rolling over the cars. Yeah. Yeah. It's just beautiful stuff, you know, just wild stuff. So this is something from a thing called Space Giants. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know of it. I've never seen it, but I know that we got a lot of Tokusatsu fans in the audience that will like that right. a lot. I like the bubble on the top. I know, I know. It's just so yeah. it's almost kind of Buck Rogers Yeah, I was gonna say Buck Flash Gordon. This is like yeah, Flash, Flash Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, that's a better one. Flash Gordon is actually I think yeah. better. Okay, this is that whole big room from you know going into the other room now. Just little actually shots gone. here. And um Damn. Okay. this is from Mighty Jack. Another tokusatsu show that I have yeah. not. Oh, seen. there's Ed in the background. Yeah. So this is like this big Mighty Jack, and I don't know Mighty Jack. I just know the name, but I mean, I can love. I love looking at ships. You know. Yeah. Like no, this. I mean those are that. That's highly impressive. Yeah. Look at that. And uh, yeah, John uh, Cassidy says uh, the Mighty for Mighty Jack. So that's. It, yeah, the, these see MJ. Yeah, it's cool. not to be confused with Spider Man's girlfriend or <laughs> whatever. But yeah, these are all nice. I like these. You know, so this is, I guess, the Ultraman room. Oh, yeah. Here. Get some Ultraman stuff. Yeah, see, Ultraman. So yeah, little shots like that. There he is. He's flying. And there he is again. Nice smooth butt. <laughs> Ren and Stimpy. He's got a Stimpy butt. Yeah, yeah. There seems to be a mild obsession. Yeah, right. yeah. They've been doing some uh, weird photoshops on Twitter of for Shin Ultraman. Oh, that's ridiculous. It is. That's really cool. I like the switch on his back there. Yeah, what? That down over there. So yeah. So this is obviously like a battery um, compartment. That's my art photo. Yeah, and these are, here you go. Here's all this stuff there, and wow, more um, Ultraman ships, I guess. John can correct me, and more Ano. If you th see things down here, more Ano little character d design display. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, 
like I said, this is the biggest show I've ever seen, like with the most, you know, props going on. No, it's insane the amount of stuff that's in here. It's just like really dense. Yeah. Yay, I like this. I don't yeah. know what's going on there. I'm yeah, sure. I'm not really sure, but it was kind of, <laughs> um... see, we're gonna get canceled for not knowing Ultraman well enough. Um yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know John's a fan. If if my boy uh Mike was here, he'd be able to point some stuff out. Right. Wow. And uh I think this is Star Wolf. I, I don't know what that is, but I like that a lot. Yeah, no, this I this I like. I mean, look at the, the front of it, you know. Yeah. It's like it's like filtering space junk as it comes in. I don't yeah. know, you know. So but it's like really, yeah, it's cool. It's it's got a little Star Wars yeah. vibe to it, but and there's these, a lot of anime. Yeah, in these there. colors I, I, I like. Yeah. You know, so these are all cool things. All right, Moon, actually that's 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 my style of ship right there. Yeah, this like might that. be. I'm sorry, this is probably Star Wolf. Can I see it over here? I, I don't know. I, I don't really know. So excuse my ignorance on some of these things, you know. Beautiful model. Yeah, there you Zone go. Fight. Wow. Zone fighter. Wow. So this is an original outfit. I got we Zone. we got a I got a buddy. His, his name is Daikaiju Legends. Jake. Uh, he comes here a lot. Did his I mom wish. name him that? Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, I wish he was here because this is like this is his thing. That is incredible. Yeah, and here we got a bunch of cool oh, masks neat. And stuff. You know, Mirror Man is up there. I recognize that. I Hawaiian guy escapes me. This is this is Specter Man. That's what it says. Specter Man. I'm sorry. Yeah, Specter Man. Wow, I really do suck tonight. Green Man. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not really sure. Is it? Were these guys Subaraya or P Productions? And I'm sorry, I feel like okay, such a... I, I don't know. These probably also like when you go up to Yuji's place, he's got yeah. all this stuff. This, really, got to be from his collection. I mean, he's just got masks, Ultraman masks, original ones from up the you know. He's just got them all up there. Fireman says Golden Pig Su Studio, Lion Maru. There we go. Yeah, yeah Lion go. Maru, I think, is, right is P there. Productions, Lion if Maru. I'm not mistaken. I could be okay. wrong. That's damn, that is cool. Yeah. Okay, don't even ask me. Uh, Red Man is in the middle. That much okay. I know. Uh, I have no idea what's on the right there. I like this. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I love it. <laughs> I was going to say, out of the three of them, that's the one you pick. Yeah, it's... Right, right, right. There you go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ultraman. Oh, wow. It, look at these cases they're in. I mean, look at this case. It's awesome. I love you it. Know? Yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah, Golden Pig Studio is, like, really impressed. He goes, Silver Common? Holy bleep, they have everything. Yeah, this is Ultraman 80. You know, so this is we're I getting through that. over here. We're getting over to the camera. Hell yeah. Section. So we got it's the big battle. Where well, there we go. Sure, that's an original. Exactly. Yeah, it's totally, you know, uh uh Gauss screen from used. This is also screen used for Gamma 2. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gamma 2. And this is Gamma 3. Oh damn. And this, you know, what's so cool about this is like this is um, over in Shibuya, and this is actually like these signs were what were on there at the time. That's crazy. Oh, like, yeah, you, you got Titanic, Titanic over here, oh, you know, Jackie Brown. Huh? Yeah, Bean is right next to yeah, Jackie Mr. Brown Bean, on there. Right. Um, wow. I, I probably have photos from Shibuya at, um, with this. What is this fire? It looks like a firefighter thing. I never yeah, really looked at the that. TV I don't show. know. But anyway, that's the Gamma yeah. 2 suit. Damn. And I know this is like in Yuji's collection. That is incredible. So, anyway, just going through this. And do you, uh, I know this is kind of a nerd question, but do you do you have a favorite Gamma design out of Kaneko's movies? Yeah, Nightmare Gamma. Nightmare Gamma? Yeah hardly seen but i just think it's really awesome <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um 
Um, but yeah, I, I would say of the standard suits, the Gamma Three suit is my favorite, and that was yeah made by Hataguchi. You know, the and the, I love the way the, the 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 plates all shift on the back. Yeah, I mean, I still remember seeing that in the theater the first time, being like, "Oh my god, what that? Why? Why would you even do that?" But it's so cool that you did that. You know, that's what I talk about, like like throwing in a little extra just to like make it, you know, cooler. You know. Yep. But these are Gamma 3 miniatures. They're beautiful. Yeah, these this nice? would be like in the Kyoto stuff, right? I guess, yeah. I think that's what this is. This is like really like that. Mike. This is Mike, you know, art director stuff. So, And Norman, forgive the, the stupid questions, but if there's anyone who can at least even give a ballpark answer, it's going to be you. How, like, if, if they were going to be starting from scratch on something like this, you know, a little garden shop or whatever how long would it take a well, team it, or a person you know, to put that together because you know i i can't really answer that because they prepare this stuff oh no i know and, but i'm, I'm saying and, i'm saying like, for example, like this bicycle um i think like you can buy stuff like this you know that yeah, it's a little yeah, yeah, easier yeah. today like you can go to shops you know made in china little miniature things they go out and they buy them they don't have to really make everything from scratch like they used to have to right so I mean, it's, it's really enough. a combination these days of buying little stuff, you know, fixing it up, however, you know, and then organizing it, you know, on on the set. So I, I really can't say, you know, Fair I know, for example, like if you think of GMK where the Godzilla foot comes down on the yeah. the Ryokan, you know, the guys peeing in the thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that took setting that up took just about two days to to get everything set up everything was prepared in, in advance and then you know the the art department you know gets to work on that and it was like um uh, while they're working in one section of studio nine uh they're shooting you know stuff with godzilla and getting the the, the foot ready at night for the next day and then like right. the next was like the whole day was spent the art department like non-stop like building up building it up building up and then around uh six in, at in the evening you know they drop the foot on it you know so That's it's kind of cool. like that i mean they work pretty quickly and, and pretty diligently you know on this stuff um and mw little... mw said man everything about the heisei gamma movies look good especially for the time yeah yeah these are just like stuff you know yeah yeah Man. Boys gotta love those electrical towers. Like in Hedra watching last night, and then and they roll down the mountain and they just like crash into into the you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like really nice. Love that. Uh, and I right I'm not sure, but this airplane might be from Last Dinosaur. <laughs> wow, is that cool? It's really cool, and it's from uh, my favorite airline, NAL. I wonder if that's supposed to be J A L. <laughs> and oh, then he... these are from uh, the Higuchi submergence of Japan. Wow. I was just there. Oh, what is that? I don't know. Anyway, and then this is that short film that they did for that's this right. show. The, the God, or um, forgive me, the people in the chat can. can talk about it's it, it was studio right ghibli there, the right? warrior god warrior god yeah 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 thing destroys all then they had this in the middle which you could walk around in which That's is cool. a um yeah it was kind of fun okay and then this thing they had this i was so like cracking up seeing this because i've seen this and i have some photos to show you since my first day on godzilla set i've been looking at this thing which is a <laughs> big fan that they point at stuff Oh, there it says uh, no photo. I was gonna but, say yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But no, I mean we had our little photo okay ban. This guy's mm -hmm. probably looking at us. More foreigners taking photos and they don't know. Yeah, yeah. Foreign. There's, there's no yeah, whatever. But anyway, this fan here's a shot I took on. Oh, that's great. I think uh, Mega Giras. I was over there, and there's the same fan on the the Toho <laughs> lot. I'm, I'm a big fan of this fan. <laughs> and then this is like um, at on Godzilla 2000 on the rooftop scene. I took this photo there, and you see the 
the fan over on the side there. So, you so see there, in your in your follow up book to Behind the Kaiju Curtain, are you going to write about the the history of the Toho fan? It's just going to be a book dedicated to the Toho fan. <laughs> Anyway, there they are all getting blasted. You know, that's, that's a, the end of Godzilla 2000 and stuff. So, yeah, the fan oh, is a great. part of history. This is a very old digital camera, you know. But anyway, that's wild. back inside, you know, the miniature stuff. And, I, I, yeah, this is Mike was involved in. It was like the art director on this. So, you know, he's really like, you know, today's top guy for this stuff. Yeah. Very very nice guy. He was so nice. He's, you know, he's been very nice to me. And yeah, yeah. Look at this stuff. Beautiful. It's great. I mean, I love this stuff. You know. Yeah, I, I really. This is really making me long for the days of. And then they had this set up. I don't know. Whatever, with this <laughs> title on there for Higuchi, special effects director. You know, so he's. Uh, it's just a, a cardboard cutout. He, he was, I think he was there last night. I was leaving and you know, everyone's wearing masks these days, you know, mm -hmm. so Higuchi was there last night, but That's I was, really cool. I was on my way out. I didn't say anything anyway. And then this is, you know, wow. power. this is the, this thing. So the God warrior thing. Yeah. And more shots like this. Are these a little, there I am like looking at stuff and okay, let's just get through these. Beautiful. Oh yeah, very nice. Yeah, these are nice and uh, more design stuff. I saw this film a couple times back then. Yeah, I think it's floating out there on Vimeo or something. Yeah, probably. These are the storyboards for it. Oops. Love it. Anyway, oops, just to zoom in as best I can. Yeah, they were really like going for the analog throat on that thing yeah that like the whole point of it was to do everything analog that's awesome so this is like what they tried to do at the very end of the exhibit because we're getting to the end was they're trying to recreate like the sheds at toho you know they the sheds yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. the sheds don't exist anymore you know i was at toho two weeks ago on business and man i mean that studio has really been condensed down to like really? bare essentials i was talking to you know, I, I met a couple of Toho staffers and I was talking to one yesterday and I was like, yep, I mean, it's just not a, it used to be like a village, you know, used to walk around, open spaces, greenery. Now everything is just, I mean, if you're going to make a movie, it's, it's better now because the studios are so, you know, modern, modernized and they're large and accommodating, but it's not like, you know, it was much bigger you yeah. know it's more spacious you know they've they've torn down you know where that godzilla mural is outside yes you know, the road wraps around that and that used to be studio one and two that that was the pr department that was the office buildings no that's kidding. all like then that was sold to the city all that land you know and it's like man i mean it's so i don't want to say it's depressing but it's depressing you know i mean it's it's their business and they have to do you know what they feel is right and stuff but i mean i just to myself i say well thank god i was able to experience it before this but even like it even like talking to amamoto like during gmk when me and you know the actor amamoto we'd have lunch together he would be look at this place it's been so like downsized you know so <laughs> you know like and and ed you know told me like if you read in um, behind the Kaiju curtain, behind um, the 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 big pool, they had all those uh, mobile home, uh, not mobile homes. They had those like um, uh, samples of homes. You know, you could go in as a home buyer and look at yeah. homes you might want to buy and stuff like that. Model homes. And Ed told me when he was there in the seventies, it was all fields back there. Really, you know so. Yeah, no, I mean, times change, you know. So anyway, that's what this is like, uh, trying to recreate the the shed, the sheds at Toho. So you get like, look, I mean, you know, this is all miscellaneous tanks and probably from Kawakita films and, and other war films. There's Gorath. That's neat. You know, I, I, I have a funny story. I was at Toho during Final Wars and I was like poking around in one of the sheds. Um, 
with I can't remember his name right now. He was the art the art director on the Heisei series, along with uh, Ina Ue. He's a very very sweet guy and a, and a friend of mine, Oki, who's actually in Japan right now. Um, and we were like poking around, and I opened this cardboard box, and Gorath is in it. And I pulled it out, and I, I took a, I think I put it up on Twitter the other day like a couple of months ago, like, oh, the, yeah. you know, I'm gore off in a box, a cardboard <laughs> box, you know. It's on display right now at the Inoue, Inoue uh, event that, like I said, starts today at the same museum. That's you neat. Know? And then here Whoa. is this Godzilla foot, and this was built for the 84 Godzilla. Okay. And, you know, as you know, in GMK, it was reused for stepping on the... Um, yeah. Ryokan. So I got to see that thing in action. That's really neat. It's just this foot. You can sort of see the photo down here. Yeah. You know, like this. Yeah. So wow. I should have pulled out a photo I took of it on the set. Anyway, this is the got you know 84 Godzilla head. That is crazy. Kind of looks different. There's something it's a little bit <laughs> looking more like an imperial Godzilla figure with that red lipstick these days. I wish to make this into a figure. Yeah, I know. Where I mean, come on, that's what I want. <laughs> so, and then these are oh, uh, yeah. yeah miscellaneous submarines. I think the top one is from uh, versus King Gidra. I was just about to say that looks like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what this bottom one is. Ed couldn't even identify it. So it's pretty beautiful. That's why I bring Ed along. We go to these things. It's like Indiana Jones 3. You know, I, I write it in my diary so I don't have to remember yeah. it. I bring Ed around so I don't have to remember. Because when we go to these <laughs> events together, it's great. I'm like, Ed, what's that again? What's that again? Oh, that's this. That's this. You know, the guy's like a walking encyclopedia of this stuff. It's so much fun, you know? It's so, awesome. Yeah. These I love. The Yalin. Oh, Look yeah. The Yalin. I, you know. Wow. And I think down here, this is from 84. Okay. Might be from 84. I don't know what this is. I'm thinking at first, oh, is that the native guys from Sea Monster? But, oh, wait, no, wait. There's just two guys, and they were native guys. Yeah. I love that in Sea Monster. You know, when they get the bar, the, you know, the, the shish kebab of the, the yes. native guys. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. So great. And, um, yeah, these are more, um, I think this is, King Kong versus Godzilla Earth Movers. Wow. Yeah, so this is yeah from King Kong versus Godzilla. So real old stuff there. And that I actually talk about in my book. You know, that's the during the shooting of uh GMK when it was the the uh the the station. What was the station's name in GMK again? I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about, but you know when they were so. doing the TV station and Sonoshi. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that yeah. wild wig on, you know, the long wig. All those yeah. scenes were shot in one day. So when we were shooting that in the morning, I, I have this in my book. But I was hanging out with Sanoshiro brought a VHS of King Kong versus Godzilla. So we're like watching that. He's watching that for inspiration. So I'm in the the dressing area because it was a real a real office that they did the shooting on a Sunday. So it was in the back. It was like he's getting dressed up and chiharu was getting made up so it was the three of us were watching this film and when the bigger scenes come on you know the scenes with the earth movers and stuff like this and and uh sana's telling um chiharu because she doesn't know this stuff you know yeah so she, he's like yeah you know that's what's so awesome about subaraya was he could have gone to a real place and just shot the real stuff but he's trying to keep this like miniature aesthetic going throughout the whole film, you know? And yeah, it was like, That's you awesome. know, yeah, he's a big, you know, awesome nerd Godzilla fan too, you know? So he really, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then during lunch, we went back and we were watching more and then Kaneko joined us and we were just having a good time on GMK watching King Kong versus Godzilla. <laughs> you know, so I love anyway. it. Oh, they're up on a shelf. It's the Super X2. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's the I, Super I X2. I'll, do, I'll take it home yeah. with me. I love the Super there X2. Go. Yeah, Super X2 is cool. That's amazing. And just more 
stuff. I think the helicopters, I think this is also from King Kong. Yeah, they look uh, pretty. No, this says 73. This one, it's something from 68. And this one's 71. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mistaken. Yeah. This looks like that helicopter in the Gamera, you know, when he slices it in half. It's the same style. Oh, yeah, in uh, in Gamera versus Gauss. Is that what I you're talking about? That. You know, yeah, I think, yeah, that's what I think that's. Oh, there you go. Over here. Oh, yeah, that's definitely King Kong versus Godzilla right there. Yeah, that's that's it's one of the helicopters. That one the airlift. Airlift. So it's, it, but no, it's different. I can't. Oh, is King it? Kong, wait, King Kong versus Hedora. So that's a uh, smog monster. So Did you say some... King Kong versus Hedora? Is that what you just said? I, I'm sorry, Golgita. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> sorry. And then this thing up here, this is all on the Millennium series, the, the buildings. Like that's oh, always yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. that will always be the thing in the very far background. Yeah. So you always okay. see that it's like this forced perspective thing. And um What's the guy's name? The artist. He was just there at the show yesterday. Like in my bringing Godzilla down to size, he's like the guy that paints all those background, um, background paintings for, um, for you know Godzilla stuff. He did like yeah, he even did like the GMK one, but and he did on my um, my. Um, uh bring godzilla down to size he did the for the when we have the volcano eruption thing yes. background painting for that anyway I, I um this is yeah so it was just like up there it's like oh i know that from the set i should be allowed to touch it <laughs> i don't know this is sorry i'm being stupid Loved it. no no you're not being more stupid. more stuff more um, cool stuff we got a uh, fred acott who came in uh, it's his birthday today he turned 59 happy birthday fred hey man um He's asking if we have any set photos from Shin Godzilla. Uh, Fred, this is a museum exhibit from 2012, so about uh, four years too early for that. Yeah. But happy birthday, Fred. Um, and cool. more, I think, Earth Digger stuff from that and other, like, I think, oh, this is also, uh, yeah, I think. I, I yeah I, what is this again what, what is that attached to huh Am I, the, like the the wire it's coming out of the back of the vehicle oh, well, it would shoot stuff and so this oh is duh thing, like, you know duh. So, i'm sorry yeah. yeah that was really stupid duh okay and then yeah. these are this is from destroy all monsters on the bottom here you know when mothra bumps into yeah, this yeah 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 look at that thing i want that, that. neat you know, yeah, just more. These are King Kong versus Godzilla um, stuff, things. Love yeah. It. Yeah, and more tanks. And more tanks. <laughs> I want one of those tanks. And even more tanks. <laughs> Everyone, you have to take one tank home with you. That, that's that's tonight's giveaway. Everyone gets a tank. This I'm unsure what this is from, but it's also very cool, and I like yeah. the mirror things. I I love those. Yeah, I, I like that stuff. Yeah, and this I'm kind of unsure about. I didn't take photos of it's just like miscellaneous. But what's kind of cool is this is from GMK. This is Amamoto. Oh, uh, Hotaru from yeah GMK. If you're friends yeah, with, um. If you're friends with uh, Higuchi on Facebook, he has a photo of this as his background photo for some That's reason. Awesome. And was a war in space again. We're getting near the end. Here's a cool shot from, you know, the set there. Monster, monster, yeah. And uh, this is the Lorelei sub. Wow. So I'm in Lorelei, as you probably know. I have yeah. a... I say something in that movie, right? I think I'm the first. That's it. Um, when I was over at Toho, I was at Toho for the rap party of Attack on Titan by coincidence. A film I worked on was we were having the staff a cast screening, 
And some of the actresses on my, that film were also in, in Attack on Titan. So when it was over, we just like crashed the, the Attack on Titan party. <laughs> and I went up to, I, I got really, my goal was to get drunk and eat as much pizza as I could. Love and it. I got really drunk and I went up to, I was trying to get the subtitle job on Attack on Titan. And he, he Gucci sees me, he goes, the first actor in any of my movies. I know you're upset that I didn't put you in this movie. And I'm like, no, I don't care about that. I want the subtitle job. I know you you want me to apologize. No, like we were like miscommunicating. It was just like, we're both drunk, you know? So I never got the subtitle job to attack on Titan, by the way. <laughs> okay, I wanted the subtitle job, of course, on Shin Godzilla. Yeah. And then I saw the movie and I'm like, thank God I didn't get that. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, I mean, there's a nightmare for you. you know, yeah, no, that would have been. Oh, been this is from before. Thing. The same sub from before. There's the Yalin. I mean, isn't that cool? It is. That I'd love to have, you know. That's sweet. I like this. Ed took the shots. There's me bumping my head against the Yalin. That's what it looks <laughs> like. Wait, and this one's better. I'm like trying to like kiss the end of yeah, the I was going to say, like, you're making out with the boat. Right. And then the very last thing is they had uh, oh, King cool. Gidra from GMK there. I think I'm doing like, hey, buddy, remember me? Wow, look at that. Anyway, so now this is my photo. I'm going to show you. Here's like a real shed over at Toho. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, this morning, I got up late. I'm like, oh my god, I got to find some shed photos. So I just found these uh just i have more somewhere there's like several sheds this isn't really the one i wanted but you can see like here i zoom in a bit you know bus up here wow. some mothra wings you know from the mothra films Jeez. you know i i guess i like climbed up on top of this thing you know and you can see yeah, um you know because i mean they make stuff in these yeah things, it's work you know? yeah Oh, actually, you go back here. You see this over here where I'm circling. This was yeah. Oh, this right here. This is in GMK, where Gidra's under the ice and he busts yes. through. So yeah. this was used in GMK. This was built for because this is during GMK shooting. Wow. And um, then this is some suit, a Godzilla suit. I don't know what it was exactly. I need Ed around. There's that globe. You see back over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see how much dust is on these head things? Yeah. Oh, and you see this up here? This I think this is from Kaneko's Crossfire, where they were burning bodies. Interesting. That's what that's from. Uh, oh, and these are those little, I don't know what you call it, tetrahedral things. You know, they, they put them out when they're on the shore, you know, like wave breaker things in Japan. Yeah. And here's like, I was guess you know, like airplane things. And oh, here's the, uh, there's junior, you know, yeah. Over there, just lying on the ground, you know? Yeah. And a, on a dirty mat on top of that. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Like now with the wearing white gloves and putting these little things, but this is how, you know, it is at the studio. Oh, and then when, when me and Ed were done, we went and we met with uh, Shinada yeah you know, suit maker because ed was doing commentary for bialante and we wanted to go over so there i am with him too and so we got together you know talked for a little while going through questions about the film and ed did the commentary and i think what happened was toho never they dragged their feet on approving the commentary and it never got included yeah sounds sounds like uh, par for yeah, course gonna toho you know so anyway, then yeah, that's all my photos there on that. That's awesome. Um, is it just frozen on that photo? Are you seeing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, there's gonna, a black screen. I'm gonna quit out of this. So okay. here I am back in the real world. But I was gonna do one last thing on this thing because we've okay. been going at it for a while, almost two hours. But I had some photos from yesterday. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So and this, is, me... this is from the, the Inua exhibit that literally just opened today, right? That opens today, right? Yeah. So uh, hold on a second, please. What the hell is going on? These are all out of friggin' order. Okay, this is going to be 
a mess. Oh no, it's all good. Just going through the comments here. Golden Pick Studios says that he feels like they just disrespected their props, Toho. And Cole yes says, and no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it is a business for them. And yeah. once it's used, it doesn't have. I mean, even like, you know, the scene in GMK where Baragon, you know, rips through the parking lot. Yeah. You know, they really worked hard on that. It was really beautiful. And I was talking to Mike, you know, before shooting. He's like, you know, this stuff should be in a museum. Mike, and I have that in my book, I think, that quote. Mike is like, not at all. You know, these things were designed purposely for the film. Once it's shot, its purpose no longer, you know, it serves no purpose any longer. Yeah. And so, definitely. you know, that's kind of like the attitude. It's only been a recent thing, even in America, you know, where they, you know, Reevaluating the value of, of these yes. and then they auction the crap out of these things. Oh, yeah. Now, like know. heritage auctions and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, there is a lot of stuff that I, you know, wish was still around. And, you know, in Japan, we do have um, space issues, land issues. Yeah. You know, and yeah, space that's why they had these sheds. They threw a lot of stuff in the sheds. I understand they also had places in other, you know, less expensive areas of Tokyo like, you know, out in the suburbs that they kept stuff. I never visited any of those places, but I was told that, oh, we don't have it here. It's got to be up over there. And then mm -hmm. when they started downsizing the studio, they had put a bunch of stuff into like some of the new buildings. And I went in one like 10 years ago, a bunch of foreigners came and I took them to Toho and we went through like and they brought out the oxygen destroyer and they brought wow. out the helmet and they had some stuff like oh check this out but it was like not like the shed you know the ambience of the shed right any longer you know where it was like oh look at this dusty room and stuff so i've got more <laughs> shed photos you know and now i think back and like oh i should have done more you know i should have really spent time in the shed but i was really you know getting to the set going right you know getting to the studio going right to the set doing all of that and then sometimes you know getting lunch oh there's a shed i'm gonna pop my head in you know i was yeah. also trying to be careful you know if some people are working inside the shed i'm not gonna be like mr geek is here to take photos of your garbage <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway so let me just show these photos from yesterday these are kind of in a little haphazard order um Paul's back with two bucks, so it looks like the tornado warning was just. Warning. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Um, he's asking if this stream will stay up. Uh, uh, to yeah, be determined, Paul. It's up to Isn't Norman. It? Yeah, it's, I'm fine with it. Wait, let oh, me. Yeah. Okay, Thank you for the two dollars, by the way, Paul. What the hell is wrong with this thing? Okay, guys, this is. Okay, I'm just gonna do this, and not this is not a lot of photos. Yeah. You know, because yeah, I'm getting little photoed out here let me get to the share thing you've, you've and... only been doing it for a couple of decades now yeah if well, not longer. Here. hold on give me the share share the screen okay here we go so this is like walking in to the place oh. um kind of you're actually not supposed to show some of these photos so I, I can't show like a lot of the nitty gritty inside. Well, that's fine. Should... Shouldn't show, but there's an original Godzilla script. That's insane. You know, so there's the Gorath. There's Gorath again. You know, so this one is like, yeah, right out in the open and stuff. And they got illuminated too, which is cool. Yeah. And this is like two photos. They had all of like uh, a lot of scripts of, you know, Uwe's that he had worked on. All that. That's really neat. And here's, you know, other stuff. His mission to recreate the real world. So, yeah, it's kind of like this. Because I was lucky yesterday. I mean, it was a press and people involved in the, um, the, the exhibition. You know, so, and this is, here's another room with stuff. You know, most of it's like art. Here's the whole, head, you know, you know, way design Hedra. Wow. So, you know, they got a Hedra eye right there. That's insane. And uh, here they are. Love you it. Know, I had never seen this photo, but maybe. Yeah. Hedra's. Yeah. Hedra is so, you know, we we're watching it last night. Miyako's like, what she loves about the way the eyes are up and down. 
Yeah. You know, it makes it really cute in a way. It's something. You know, here there's that SY3 in the background. Oh yeah, the the redo. Yeah. Um sorry not to interrupt. Paul just came in with another 10 bucks. Thank you, Paul. Really? Matt, did you say you needed more money? No, I didn't, Paul, but I appreciate no, it all. More money needs more money. That's yeah. <laughs> Buy more books. Thank buy, you, Paul. Buy more books. Right? More, more books. You know, every time I look dead. Um, and then uh, this film we worked on, you know, the, uh, Bringing Godzilla. This is how I got invited to this thing was because there's no footage of Ino Ue at work. The only yeah. footage that exists of him at work is on my Bringing Godzilla down to size. So Toho, my favorite company in the world, in quotation marks, has not been allowing my film to be shown. Mike has been wanting to show it. So uh, I kind of, we just had a little to do about my film and I've reclaimed uh, ownership of my film. I, know, I don't I own actually... the clips. The Godzilla clips are their property. Right. You know? So I cannot show the film or without their approval because of the clips. It was licensed right. for that one release. But the actual footage that I shot, the interviews and things like that, that's mine. You know, Toho, That's awesome. they didn't pay for the, the production. You know, they actually took half the production um, money for clip fees, which was annoying. So you took half of my budget and then you claimed ownership of the film. Yeah. I mean, what kind of nonsense is that? I yeah. mean, it really makes me upset, you know. But anyway, so I reclaimed ownership of it. I got all the clips, gave the, the clips to... Uh, uh Mike, he's been wanting to show this stuff for over 10 years wow. and also the clips were shot hd the the release of bringing godzilla down to size was sd so they re-edited it for this thing so yeah this is like our credit so you can go that's one of the features of this exhibition is our interview we did with him and the shooting the volcano scene so they re-edited yeah. that and everyone's really like thank god that you know that we shot this stuff because it you know it wouldn't exist even though of course he's been retired you know i watched yeah. it with a couple of the old timers and like there's this great shot of you know Uwe where we, when he calls cut okay for the volcano because we did it twice and he was okay and he has this big happy look on his face and some of his you know old timer friends were there and they're like look at this he's so happy <laughs> you know and, <laughs> and it was really nice like his relatives were there everyone was thanking me you know uh, me ed and steve were you know were, were were you know they have us on you know the wall in the place it's really nice i mean i'm really you know i, I came to japan not expecting to be a part of this world and i'm a fan of this world and, and it's i'm glad i can could, could contribute to it you know absolutely you know so i feel good because i feel like you know you know, you know, trying to represent and trying to bring something, you know, uh, you know, trying to, you know, how can I say, like trying to do something for these people, you know, that they might not notice is their own value. Yeah. If that makes any sense, you know, and like our, our documentary is something that, um, they never made themselves, you know, this was before, you know, we really made it before even the Japanese were making a big deal about their miniature yes. work, you yeah. know, and I, and I think that that our, our film also helped, you know, the, oh, totally. this thing here, you know, Higuchi's written about my film, um, you know, and yeah, I think this was some, one of those things, like I was saying, when the, the West has to recognize it before the, you know, the Japanese, yeah. you know, um notice its value so so no it was nice to to, to that th this is you know up there to be playing for the next couple months so that's good i just threw I this wanted, i wanted to show this, this real quick this everyone should pick this up sorry real quick this is the Inno Inno Ue book norman's actually in this too but this has a lot of the stuff that's in this exhibit it's really beautiful highly recommended sorry norman i just wanted to to oh, okay it. yeah Let's talk about that when we're done here. This is the Griffin from Love Mega that. Gidos. I actually watched them shoot this um, back when I was on the set of Mega Gidos. And this is, I yeah. think, the last thing that Ina Ue designed. So this is the original prop. This is on display now. I really like that design. Yeah, the movie is, cool. yeah, but the 
the designs and production uh, designs in it are really amazing. Okay, this is all out of order. This is the the big centerpiece is this, you know, the department store from Rodan. So Mike yeah. and his team, they recreated the whole set. So this is so, a spot that's like photos are completely okay. So these are kind of out of order, but this is like, I was taking, wow. you know, taking photos of this stuff. So here, we'll, I'll get to the the overall view shot. This is actually my friend Oki brought this. And this is actually um, a real toy from the 50s, like they used to use on these Really? Sets. Yeah, so he, this is his contribution to it. <laughs> this is like, he was telling me that I brought that from my collection. And that's like a real toy, the kind that they used to use to decorate these sets. Like oh, I said, store-bought bought stuff. So yeah, look at this stuff in the windows. You know? That's wonderful. I like, chairs. I like those little, you know, 50s style yeah. chairs there. And uh, yeah, that's just such a. Okay, here we're getting back into. You can see the scope wow. of the thing. I think I put these up in Facebook. Yeah, here's the here Same stepping thing. back, and I like up here. If you can see up here, nah, it's a little. They're like these, um, you know, merry-go-round stuff. Yes, like amusement park on the roof of this place. Um, so, and that's that's all I have. And then I had the. You're going to say something? No, I was going to say about the amusement parks up on top of the stores. Uh, they they said something about that in the singular point commentary. And I, I feel like that used to be a, a pretty common thing, but maybe not so much anymore. I was just wondering if, if you could shed any light on that or if I'm just. Well, I don't know. I mean, on. look, this is before I was even born. Oh, no, <laughs> I, I know, but I just I just meant, you know, just I don't know if that's still a thing or not. So I was just curious. Um, no, not it's not a thing anymore. Okay. You know, they, they in Osaka at the HEP 5 building in Umeda, they did put a Ferris wheel on the roof, but I don't think people really do that anymore. You know, anyway, this is good stuff. This is like, you know, they got the, you know, a bunch of stuff on oh, sale. Please tell Either. me if it's the Sonic Godzilla one right there with uh, Gymantis there. Yeah, these are clear files. And you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then they have these figures that they're set based on you know ways designs, but they're a little too rich for my blood. This is like fifty bucks, and this is like seventy bucks. So I'm gonna just have to look at them from afar. <laughs> uh, that's how these are, and then more clear file things. That's great. And these are, you know, a designs of Hedra keychains. And these are coasters. I'll show you. I bought this one. I bought the Hedra one yesterday. I'm using it right now. And when they go again, if they still have them, I'm going to get the Godzilla one. And this is a clear file. And they made a poster of it. It's very nice design of Ino Ue. Here's Ino Ue, you know, surrounded by his design work and, and things. So these are magnets and keychains and postcards. You know, you know, way like these are like long postcard things, like his designs from Godzilla and Company and T-shirts. Look at these Godzilla versus Hedra T-shirts. Yeah, and bags. those are kind of wild. Here. Oh, and this is the book here. Um, this came out like just before you know Uwe passed away ten years ago. We actually he did a show at Superfest. I went to it, and he died like a couple of weeks later oh my god you know so it was really i got i'm in that book you know they write yeah a big yeah. chapter dedicated to bringing godzilla down to size um and uh yeah so i yeah i was at the show i got him to 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 sign the book and then he just he passed away so suddenly it was very sad you know so it was like 10 years ago couple of the people like two of the uh art guys were there yesterday uh shirasaki and uh takagi you know they were at at the show yesterday it was good to see them they're really nice guys so oh, there's the bag again the, there's the hedra t-shirt uh, more clear file things clear file things um, these are like um art prints 
Oh yeah. Can I like on that? These are like you know, fifty backing. bucks or something like that. You know, frame suitable for framing. Suitable for framing. It's a cool. Gotta have the copyright Toho on the bottom. <laughs> you know. Anyway, and there's the bag again. More T-shirts. And this photo came out of focus. This, this Hedra fit figure is only like fifty bucks. I'm like, really? I, I, I just, man, I want it. It, I, you know, I'm not a big collector, but I need a decent Hedra figure. Right. I, my house is does not have a good Hedra figure. I like this one. I don't. I'm uh, upset. This photo came out of focus, and this is. Oh, you can sort of see it over here. The thing looks pretty big too. It's only fifty bucks. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Wow. So this is kind of like the ambience of that. And oh, there I am. <laughs> on Twitter yesterday. And oh, this is uh, we were taking this is so this is me, okay. This is me looking all fat and shit with my shirt disheveled. Oh. I should have been taking a, a pose a little better. And then it's so funny, then you know, Asada over here, right? Yeah, you know, he's a, a special effects director. Yeah, um, last thing he did was what Tokyo SOS, and I knew him from the Tokyo SOS set. And he's like, I'm like, oh. You know, I'm you know I'm sorry that I was such a burden on the set of that. He's like, oh no, not at all. Wait, but you speak Japanese? He goes, oh, because you look like a foreigner that doesn't speak Japanese. I'm like, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so anyway, this is Mike. Mike was like, yeah, Norman, come on, let's take a photo together. And then we we brought Miyako in for this. So yeah, that was yeah, that's, that's all the photo from that. And let me it out of that that is so cool man thank you Where's for sharing show, okay, see you bye <laughs> <laughs> anyway well, Jesus, that was exactly two hours to get through all of i wonder uh, how uh, all three people yeah yeah all, all three people we, we've, we've <laughs> pretty steady thank there's, you very there's much about, there's been it's been fluctuating from like 20 people on but i mean it, it's yeah, been yeah, it's, it's pretty typical for for that so yeah no i i mean i'm kind of like just I like talking about this stuff, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, and and really, uh, I like to thank you, John. Um, yeah, no, and, and it's fun to be able to show this stuff. Thank you again, John. You know, it's fun to share this stuff, and you know, I, I, uh, yeah, it's cool. No, I mean, Norman, I tell you this all the time. I thank you whenever you come on here and, and share your stories and you know share your experiences. I mean, this is a lot of stuff that. Uh, I mean, from an, both the the exhibit that we just saw and the exhibit from 10 years ago that you showed things that most of us are not going to be able or couldn't experience one way or the other. So it's really neat to be able to like go down memory lane and, and to see that and, and experience that. So, um, yeah. And MW says uh, this hasn't felt like two hours at all. What a great photo showcase. Oh, great. Thank um, you. Mark, Mark says that he, he loves this. Thank you, Norman. And. Repod Reptiles also says that was really fun. So, and Mecha Gojira says, uh, unbelievable miniatures in Rodan. Yeah, so. no, I mean, that was like, you know, way really, you know, he told the story. He was down, uh, you know, in the city. Um, well, thank you very much. Thank you. He was there doing designs and writing things down and someone reported him to the police as a, like a possible terrorist. Oh, Jesus. You know, so he had to explain like he was from Toho coming here because he was like, just like drawing down the building and, you <laughs> yeah. know, stuff like that, you know, taking notes on the, on the, the layout of the building. And he almost got his ass arrested for that. Oh my God. You know, so, um, yeah. And in a way was, you know, it was, a real hard worker you know he lost a leg in the war he was a pilot and, and he did all this stuff at toho with with one leg you know and i can tell you man it's tough enough with two legs you know yeah so um and it's really yeah and then i was talking to um shirasaki yesterday and i didn't i don't have that photo there we took a photo because we the, we went over to because uh, miyako's a big fan of frankenstein conquers the world because you know Miyako is a horror manga artist, and mm -hmm. she's into horror stuff, and she finds that to be the most horrific Toho Tokusatsu Very film. Yeah. So, and they have like a photo from you know that when 
uh, uh, Mizunokumi is like, boy, yeah, boy, yeah. yeah. She's throwing out the meat. Like, that's the weirdest thing. Like, here's just some indiscriminate raw meat for you to chow down. <laughs> on, you know? Okay, whatever. I love that. I love that whole scene. But she's just talking about how awesome the ambience of that scene is because it's like, you know, this human sized guy, a little smaller than the kaiju type of stuff. So it's got this kind of like, in betweenish feeling between reality and fantasy yeah you know on those and and he was over there and we're looking at photos he's like there's a photo of me this is me i have a photo of us pointing at him as a young guy on the set of frankenstein conquers the world but that's amazing I, then i was like i think i wrote on facebook was like so did you ever so back then did you ever think this stuff would be in a museum you know in a you know a, a big national museum like this one day he's like absolutely not <laughs> you know so <laughs> i think they're all i mean of course yeah they're all happy i wish you know way was still you know around you know whether you know i mean he was getting pretty old at you know back then i, I yeah this is his this i'm sure this is his hundredth that's what the show is it, it's his hundredth anniversary of his you know birthday his birth yeah, yeah. you know so yeah, he would have to be a hundred right now to see this. You know, yeah, but it's, it's it's crazy. Again, Norman, thank you so much for coming on here and and uh sharing all that. Uh, the Godzilla versus the Wolf Man. Oh yeah, Fred's asking, did you ever get any know, photos no, of Godzilla versus know. the Wolf Man? Yeah, I know very little about that. So and uh Cole was asking, if you don't mind me asking, what manga has Miyako done? He spelt that correctly. Um, I wouldn't know the titles offhand. She did a lot of stuff in the 90s. Like she did a lot of, you know, books like that. And recently she's been doing more commission stuff. And when I say commissions, um, like she's working on doing illustrations for an Evil Dead book that's coming out. So nice. she's been doing that. And um, yeah, I know in the 90s she did X-Men. She was in charge of Marvel's X-Men here in Japan where they didn't, Marvel didn't care. So she could do all this like wild stuff. I understand now it's like, forget it. Everything's like quadruple checked by, you know, by Marvel. But back in the nineties, it was really not a, a popular thing. And she's done some, uh, her stuff is really good. So she, I should have something I have, in the room, but I don't, I don't see. I have a set of postcards. She's actually her. just got, she's actually now getting back into traditional manga stuff. She's just been hired to do like more books. So she's, I've been trying to get her to do more, you know, actual book stuff, but she's, she's got an exhibit going on at Tokyo hands right now of her work. That's so, cool. so I haven't been there yet. I'm going to go over there. And, you know, they're selling prints of her stuff and selling, you know, her old, uh, manga books and stuff so yeah i mean i don't think any of it's none of it's ever been released in the west you know it's like we were talking it's like weird what they release in the west sometimes like uh, yeah U umezu kazuo you know you've just discovered his stuff yeah. you know and he's like the god of horror manga in japan it's yeah really hardly released there's a huge exhibition of his stuff going on right now in yeah. Tokyo. I've got to get over because it's it ends in a couple days. Um, Miyako got invited. Umezu invited her. Like they had the pre-opening. Like I went last night. She had, um, two, you know, you can bring one person and she brought her friend who's like a big Umezu fan. I'm like, I want to go. And then <laughs> so yesterday I could bring one person with me and I brought her you know, for the, the Inoue opening. So see there, you know, but um, um, yeah, anyway, so she does stuff like that. And yeah, I write about it on Twitter every now and then, or I share her her Twitter posts and stuff like that. So uh, she's, she's she's really like, awesome. She's very sweet and very there, talented. Do I have anything of hers right on? I should have something on my shelf here. I'm, Though, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm, no, no, I'm, you're all good. I'm trying to remember. I, I do have a set of postcards from her someplace with her art on it. Um, I right. think it's I, I'm not though. seeing anything offhand right now. And she's done illustrations for my stuff, you know, that I've released in Japan. Like when we did Day of the Dead, I did the Day of the Dead booklet. I have that right here. 
yeah, I got her to do my Day of the Dead Blu-ray is sealed, so I'm not gonna pop that open. But anyway, yeah. So I mean, she does a lot of stuff, and and um, actually, I'm subtitling Noboru Iguchi's new film called Idol Never Dies. That's why I was at Toho the other day. Um, there was a staff screening for the film. I went and I saw it, and then Iguchi asked me to subtitle the film. But Miyako did art for the. Uh, that's actually seen in the movie. Like some of the there's like storyboard stuff that's going on where they're like making music videos, and it's all like Miyako's art used on that. So she does a lot of different things. Um, so this is actually the first film I'm doing the subtitles on it, and she did art in the film. Like we worked on the same movie together, yeah, so kind of fun. That's really you know, cool. Fun. Well, do you want to go ahead and wrap things up, or do you want to hang for yeah, a are there any other questions? I mean, like. Um, Fred asks, do you have any photos of the Sumation actors from the Godzilla Millennium series? Oh, yeah, I do. Of course I do. The Suitmation. Well, Suitmation? Do you mean the suit actors? He's talking about the suit, suit actors. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, I got, like, tons of photos of, you know, of everyone from that, you know. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I mean, these photos, I, you know, some of them, like, you know, I'm trying to get these photos out, you know, but, you know, I have Toho kind of not happy that I have these photos. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a little careful. Like, I've been sharing photos on my Twitter account, you know, that are like connected with my, my book, but I, I'm trying to be a little careful. Like, I include photos with myself in the photos. You know, because then it's considered like a a personal snap photo. Totally. Thank you for the five um, bucks again, Paul. You don't need to keep sending money. Any chance Ed and Norman on a stream together? Well, we're in the process of trying to get Ed on. Getting Ed and Norman together would be pretty cool. Well, I, I think Ed should be on with you. Because then when me and Ed get together, I do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> so you should just make it you and Ed, you know, because this way you'll be able to get like more of the the nitty gritty from from ed there's oh, i see fred has another question there the ultraman the only thing i have from ultraman i don't have any master writer stuff because i'm not really like up on that stuff and i don't want to come across as a complete moron on it you know it's like why i don't do anything with anime because i don't know anything about really anything about anime and i'll just sound stupid if i try to act but when it comes to Ultraman, I was only on the sets for Ultraman Max. So I've got photos from the Ultraman Max set. And Masked Rider, the only thing I have photos from is Zaborga, which yeah. uh, the remake, the Iguchi remake of Zaborga. Oh, where is that? I have it here on my shelf someplace. Yeah, I did. Gonna bring it out. So I wasn't but... a still cameraman, but I did take photos on that when I was visiting the set a bunch of times. And I think Inoue designed Zaborger because they have Zaborger designs at this Inoue show. Oh. For the, the suit and the motorcycle yeah. from the original show. <laughs> So, That's no, amazing. I'm not really like, um, you know, I'm not, no disrespect to the those tokusatsu things, but I'm really not knowledgeable on that and i don't pretend to be knowledgeable on that and and i'm not dismissive of it i mean for christ's sake i love godzilla you know <laughs> what i mean so i just it's just too much at, at my age to suddenly jump into you know try to it's just like you know i i, I would just be impossible you know to even like with ultraman i i don't really know as much as i probably should um, but I don't pretend to know a lot, you know right. what I mean? So I'm, I'm very upfront with, you know, I, I seem to be, especially like now I, I turn 63 next month for God's sake, but I'm trying to focus in on what I do know, you know, like what I, I write for Japanese is like a lot of the, the, the articles I write about Japanese, like I'll get a job writing about like, I don't know, I did evil dead three release and the blu-ray so they asked me to write a piece and i wrote about evil dead opening in america you know what was evil dead to americans yeah. you know evil dead one two three you know i saw all three in the theaters when they came out so writing about that so i write a, a lot about um 
US TV in the 60s and in the 70s and how these things were perceived, you know, writing about um, all those great TV movies, you know, like the Kolchak films or mm -hmm. Killdozer. I'm a huge Killdozer fan. So writing about, I usually, in my articles for Ega Hijo, I, I go back to Killdozer a lot because my dad would always use that. Are you going to make me watch another science fiction slash horror thing? Is this going to be another Killdozer? You know, I said, made my dad <laughs> suffer through Killdozer, who, you know, always considered that the very worst thing I ever made him watch. You know, so <laughs> I try to keep that. So that's, what I'm trying to say is I kind of at this age, you know, I, I can't really expand into new, especially older territories. You know, I'm, of course, I have to do research on certain certain things and rewatch things, but kind of got to downsize things. It's It's unfortunate. I think. You know, that's one of the things when you're, you know, in your 20s and you're in your 30s, you're still like, check this out. I'm going to jump into this, you know, I mean, and and today, I mean, with everything available on Blu-ray and, you know, that's another thing, you know, like back in the the 70s. I mean, we were really slaves to the TV. Slaves yeah. was in the theater and even in the 80s, you couldn't get any of this stuff, you know. Yeah. Like we were like the only way, the way I saw King Ghidra, you know, the 92, 91, 92, 91, excuse me, was this guy I knew befriended someone at, at Yauhan, which were these Japanese department store chains that completely went bankrupt. But they had one in um, Fort Lee, New Jersey, and they had a toy outlet there. And the guy that ran the store got a copy of the VHS when it was released in Japan and yeah. let us borrow it. You know, so we we're like, it was probably the only VHS of the film in America at that time. You know, we That's didn't know crazy. anything about the film other than those articles in the newspaper, how it's like, you know, disrespecting American soldiers. Right. You know, that right. kind of like at, when the anti-Japan propaganda was at an all-time high because of you know japan being such an economic giant at the time you know so it was really tough and like you kids today with your youtubes and Blue Room, <laughs> you know no and, it, and it's great i mean uh yeah i'm i'm jealous about that so i never really had opportunities you know people ask me that ultraman it was like ultraman you know never had the chance to see that you yeah. know the first time i ever saw anything with ultraman was midnight cowboy you know, there's like, it's just for whatever reason, it's on a TV set. And like, what the hell is that? And then some girlfriend of mine got a VHS with some tokusatsu stuff when I was like 28. And I'm like, what is this stuff? You know, we had no, <laughs> especially on the East Coast. I understand like California, Hawaii got broadcasts of a lot of these things. So that's where you find like fans my age are, are more from. Yeah. Hawaii and from California, you know, it was just really a question of access. So yeah. for me, it's suddenly, oh, I'm going to sit down and watch the entire Ultraman series. I mean, forget about it. Financially, I can't put that kind of time into this stuff as much as, you know, I wish I could because you, you got me the Ultra Q set, you know, and I'd only seen Ultra, yeah. a couple Ultra Qs. You mm -hmm. know, I think those subtitles are god awful, but. <laughs> You know, but they help. They help me through. You know, my Japanese is pretty good, but it, I I need subtitles when it gets into scientific, you know, chit chat. You know, words I don't yeah. know. You know, stuff like that. So the subs hate, but it really annoys me when it's like, run. You know, they keep using the same words over and over again. Stop. Who wrote these? I'm like, God, give me the job. You know, <laughs> right. So, no, I mean, really. But anyway, yeah, no, I, I'm liking that. And speaking of Ultra Q, you know, Uwe did the designs for the first four episodes. So they have really some cool. of his design works from that at this this show going that starts today. There. Ah, it's so neat, man. Well, um, yeah. we're going at about 2.20 here. Yeah, so um, we should wrap this up. So Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, do you? I already know what you want to plug, but I'm going to plug it beforehand. Go buy the book Behind the Kaiju Curtain, available pretty much everywhere. Amazon.com is probably your best bet. Norman, is there anything else you would like to plug besides um, this one? Uh, yeah, here? actually, hold on a second. I have this book. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 um, 
No, I can't think of anything. Oh, let me just show you. I picked this up yesterday, just last final thing. So I actually bought the the book for the Ino Ue thing. I got some autographs oh, nice. on, on the front. Is that from the actual exhibition? Yeah, this is the exhibition. Oh. I haven't really, I just got it yesterday. So this has got like a- You're going back to that exhibition, right? Yeah, I am. Okay, I, I'm going to talk to you because I need you to pick me up a copy. Oh, really? Oh, well, oh, this is from the Royal Monsters. Well, yeah, see, so I'm not it's, asking it's, you to buy me one. I'm going to send you the money, but I need that book yeah. in my life. Yeah, okay. Oh, and it's one of these, Lord. like, look at this the size. This thing's like 50 bucks too. Or 45. I know you're you're making me jealous already. Like, ah, okay. Yeah, I'll ask Andre. 4,500 yen, 4,500 yen. So that's like 40 bucks for this thing. That's awesome. And I went there armed with like no money yesterday. <laughs> I don't know why. And I'm like, oh. Oh, look, uh, luckily I had that. And they, they don't take pay, pay. And I have my pay, pay and pay, pay is like, you know, they have this thing now for like electronic money in Japan and the government's trying to make, cause they want everyone to be accountable for money these days. So yeah. They can tax you, you know? So their thing now is this thing called pay, pay. Doesn't sound anything like pay pal. Right. You know? So I have that on my phone. Like my, I have my phone all loaded up with money and I'm there and I'm like, you take pay, pay? No. Like, okay, great. Well, let me see how much cash I have. So, so, like, but PayPay has been taking off in Tokyo. And like when we were in Kyoto, me and Miyako were in Kyoto for a couple of weeks in September, it was like, nobody does PayPay here. Cause you actually get back money. They were doing a thing for a while there. Like anything you buy on PayPay, 30% discount. Like the government's trying to like, oh man. I, and the, but it was like right at the height of coronavirus, like our, in our September wave, our last wave, the big yeah. wave, like, they're encouraging you to go to like restaurants, 30% off, you know, like when it's like, we're not going outside to restaurants, you know, <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Um, thank you, Paul. Yeah, no, I'm sure Norman will be back. And then, and then Paul just said book money. Thank you for the money, Paul. You don't need to keep on sending money Buy Norman's book or, or gift Buy a, a copy stack of, to a stack of No, do this. Buy a stack of my books, douse them with gasoline, film yourself, video <laughs> them, and put them on social media. Like, you know, books to burn. I don't know. <laughs> burning Norman's book, book burning. I, I won't be a true author until someone has burnt my book. Yeah, you know, you know what? I'm sure I'm if we dead. if we challenge Twitter, we could probably. <laughs> oh yeah, well, Twitter. Yeah, I, I'm a lot of great love for Norman on Twitter with, with <laughs> certain folk, but that's okay. I mean, whatever. Norman, you know, thank you again I mean, for stopping in, man. And no, okay, um, yeah. And, yeah. I, uh, I got to get to subtitling. I'm doing like yes. multiple films at the same time. It's very annoying, but I love the work so much, so can't complain. Absolutely. Okay. All right, everyone in chat, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, we'll probably be back next week with another stream. Haven't quite decided what it is yet, uh, but we might be doing a one year since uh, Godzilla Singular Point stream a week from tonight, actually. If you can believe that, one year since first broadcast. Uh, go pick up Norman's book. Go follow him on Twitter. Uh, he's a terrific guy, terrific writer. And again, Norman, thank you for sharing everything tonight. Thank you for letting me uh, talk your ear off. No, it's always my pleasure. It's always uh, an honor. So, all right, everybody, have a fantastic night. We'll catch you soon.